Hello guys and girls, I'm Dr. Omkar Sangeeta Dele Prasunoni and I once again welcome you all back to the session of Sparks. Today's discussion is going to be about the second part of psychiatry. The first part of psychiatry have already been uploaded on the YouTube. Due to some technical issues, it was conducted on Zoom. So just revising all the content from part 1 really fast, okay? Just revising the important points from uh, session 1, okay? so just remember guys i hope all of you have went through the session one but just we'll revise the session one and then we'll solve some mcqs related to session one and then we'll move forward okay so now uh, psychiatry term was coined by whom so please remember psychiatry term was coined by johan christian real psychiatry term was coined by johan christian real right alexithymia is what inability to express own emotions and understand others emotions what is anhedonia? Inability to derive pleasure from previously pleasurable activities, right? What is the basic difference between illusion and hallucination? Illusion means a false perception of a real object or a stimulus. Whereas hallucination is a false perception without any object, in absence of an object or a stimulus, right? It is vivid, it is very clear, it is involuntary, not in your will and it is in the outer and objective space, right? Generation of emotions is the responsibility of limbic system whereas regulation of emotions is the responsibility of frontal lobe right important one please remember these things then moving further guys uh, most common type of hallucinations if they ask so please remember most common type of hallucinations if asked please remember those are auditory hallucinations kya answer karoge those are your auditory hallucinations whereas most common hallucinations seen in organic and mental disorders then the answer should be visual hallucinations right please remember this tactile hallucinations seen in cases of cocaine intoxication what are these tactile hallucinations known as these are known as either formification or magnet symptom also known as cocaine bugs okay please remember this then hypnagogic and hypnopompic hallucinations both are sleep related hallucinations and those are seen in which sleep disorder those are seen in cases of narcolepsy right please remember hypnagogic and hypnopompic sleep related hallucinations are seen in cases of narcolepsy right please remember this then moving further talking about delusions important uh, is the definition of delusions please remember delusions is a disorder of content of thought okay delusion is a disorder of content of thought it is a false belief which is firm fixed unshakable and it continues despite evidence against it okay and most common type of delusions are what delusion of persecution most common type of delusions are delusion of persecution that somebody is going to harm me or kill me those are the most common type of delusions right delusion nihilistic delusion or delusion of negations are usually seen in cases of these are usually seen in cases of depression please remember nihilistic delusions whereas delusion of grandeur or grandiosity they are usually seen in cases of mania delusion of negation depression delusion of grandeur mania okay please remember these two important ones then delusion of infidelity this is also known as what othello syndrome okay othello syndrome also known as pathological or morbid jealousy usually seen in chronic alcoholic patients right please remember this then moving further about schizophrenia we have discussed some really very important points as we have discussed schizophrenia is really important topic okay so please remember who was the one who uh, coined the term dementia precox so please remember dementia precox was a term which was coined for schizophrenia earlier and it was coined by whom it was coined by emil kreplin so dementia precox was early, is the previous term for schizophrenia and it was coined by emil kreplin please remember this okay eugen bleuler ne kya diya tha please remember eugen bleuler gave the four a's okay what did eugen bleuler give eugen bleuler gave the four a's okay and what were those four a's so please remember autistic thinking and autistic behavior first second is ambivalency that is inability to decide third was affect disturbances that is emotional disturbances and last was association disturbances also known as formal thought disorder right then kurt schneider gave the 11 uh, schneiderian first rank symptoms okay so out of which three were thought alienation symptoms three were made symptoms three were auditory hallucinations and the last two were somatic passivity and delusional perception we have discussed it in details right please remember prevalence of schizophrenia in general population is how much it is only one percent but in cases of monozygotic twins it is how much 47 percent yaad rakhna important hai. schizophrenia is diagnosed with these five symptoms okay for a period of how much for a period of six months if these symptoms are lasting for a duration of more than six months then we diagnose it as 
schizophrenia but if the symptoms they last for only less than 2 weeks if these symptoms last for only less than 2 weeks then it is considered as acute psychotic disorder if these symptoms last for less than 1 month then it is considered as brief psychotic disorder and if they last for 1 to 6 months okay more than 1 month but less than 6 months then it is known as schizophrenia form disorder and more than 6 months it is obviously schizophrenia Schizophrenia. Most common type of schizophrenia, it is what? So please remember, most common type of schizophrenia is paranoid schizophrenia, which has a good prognosis. But best prognosis in types of schizophrenia is seen with catatonic or mortar schizophrenia. Whereas the worst prognosis is seen with simple schizophrenia, which predominantly has what? It predominantly has negative symptoms like evolution, apathy, anhedonia, all these symptoms, right? Then, first line treatment for catatonic schizophrenia is what? It is the only exception. Baki sub schizophrenia mein, we usually prefer antipsychotic drugs along with cognitive behavioral therapy. That is the treatment of choice. But in cases of catatonic schizophrenia, as we have discussed, the treatment of choice would be IV lorazepam. The treatment of choice would be IV lorazepam followed by electroconvulsive therapy, ECT. Right. What do we mean by Van Gogh syndrome? Van Gogh syndrome is schizophrenia along with self-mutilating behavior, self-harming behavior. Right, then we have discussed about typical and atypical antipsychotics. Typical antipsychotics usually they lead to extra pyramidal side effects like the most common side effect being acute akathisia for which the drug of choice is propanolol. The earliest side effect is acute dystonia please remember for which the drug of choice were promethazine like drugs then it can also lead to neuroleptic malignant syndrome for which the drug of choice is dantrolene and it can also lead to tardive dyskinesia right please remember okay these were all the typical antipsychotic side effects which are seen therefore we shift the patient at times to atypical antipsychotics which have lesser extra pyramidal side effects but the atypical antipsychotics like clozapine which is the drug of choice for resistant schizophrenia also okay so in these atypical antipsychotics though we cannot see these extra pyramidal side effects these patients usually suffer from the most common side effect that is sialuria that is excessive salivation and also clozapine is associated with maximum sedation and maximum weight gain okay though important point there clozapine is associated with maximum sedation and maximum weight gain and it can also lead to some lethal side effects like a granulocytosis and seizures important okay then duration of treatment for schizophrenia if it is the first episode then only two years and if it is the second episode then the minimum time would be five years and it can be indefinite okay then there were two important delusions of misidentification on which the questions have been repeatedly asked okay so please remember first was your Capgras syndrome. Capgras syndrome mein kya hota usually the familial person is replaced by a stranger. Okay. So the patient feels that a familial person in the family is replaced by a stranger, right? Whereas what happens in Fregoli syndrome? Fregoli is totally opposite. In, to uh, in Fregoli syndrome, what happens? The familial person is imposing as a stranger. Okay. So kya ho lagta hai patient ko? So patient feels that uh, some familial person is showing like he is a stranger to you. Therefore, he goes to person and person walking on the street and asks them that you are my mother, you are just behaving like a stranger to me. Right? So please remember that is what is Fregoli syndrome. Now, this, uh, this is all that we have discussed in last class, right? So now, let's move further. And our first topic in today's session would be depression, right? And depression is a very important topic from psychiatry, guys also in clinical practice and also for your MCQ purposes, right? So please remember, first of all, we'll start depression. Please remember, depression is the most common psychiatric disorder in India. If the question is most common psychiatric disorder in India, then the answer should be depression, right? And depression is also associated with maximum dallies. Depression is also associated with maximum dallies. It can also be a question from PSM. What do we mean by dallies? So please remember dallies are disability adjusted life years. Okay. Disability adjusted life years. Aisi life jo humne kisi disability ya disorder ke saath ji ho. Okay. So please remember. So maximum dallies are seen with which disease? Maximum dallies are associated with depression. Right. Right. Because many of the people in India are suffering from depression. Right. So please remember this. Then uh, depression is most common in which age group? So please remember depression is most common in middle age group, okay, middle age, like 40, 60 around. And it is common in which sex? So please remember it is more common in females, okay. 
फीमेल्स को ज्यादा टेंशन रहती है ना घर बार इसकी उसकी सो प्लीज रिमेंबर डिप्रेशन इज मोर कॉमन इन मिडल एज फीमेल्स इट इज मोर कॉमन इन मिडल एज फीमेल्स एंड वॉट इज द ड्यूरेशन फॉर डायग्नोजिंग इट एज डिप्रेशन सो प्लीज रिमेंबर ऑल द सिम्टम्स शुड मिनिमम लास्ट फॉर टू वीक्स देन इट कैन बी डायग्नोज एज डिप्रेशन मिनिमम कितना होना चाहिए ड्यूरेशन मिनिमम ड्यूरेशन शुड बी टू वीक्स टू डायग्नोज इट एज डिप्रेशन वॉट आर द साइंस ऑफ डिप्रेशन ओके देर आर सर्टन साइंस फॉर विच द इमेजेस कैन ऑल्सो बी आस्ट ओके विल डिस्कस इट इन द लेटर पार्ट सो प्लीज रिमेंबर देर आर टू साइंस फर्स्ट इज योर वेरा गुथ फोल्ड ओके प्लीज रिमेंबर फर्स्ट इज योर वेरा गुथ फोल्ड ओके इट इज अर्बाइटल फोल्ड एंड सेकेंड इज योर ओमेगा साइन सो दिस इज वॉट इज योर ओमेगा साइन सीन ऑन द फोर हेड आई शो यू द इमेजेस डोंट वरी सो द टू साइंस एसोसिएटेड विद डिप्रेशन आर वॉट फर्स्ट इज वेरा गुथ फोल्ड एंड सेकेंड इज ओमेगा साइन फर्स्ट इज वेरा गुथ फोल्ड एंड सेकेंड इज ओमेगा साइन इंपॉर्टेंट ओके what are the different symptoms of depression so please remember first of all there can be early morning insomnia okay the person usually wakes up 2 hours before the normal waking time theek hai normally insaan 6 baje uthta tha abhi 4 baje hi uth ke baith jayega so this is what is seen in depression there would be early morning insomnia second there would be leaden paralysis dot what do we mean by leaden paralysis so there is a subjective experience of heaviness of the limbs the patient feels that his limbs are very heavy and he cannot lift his limbs okay so that is what is leaden paralysis that is subjective experience of heaviness of the limbs next is your delusion of negation this we have already discussed we have discussed that which delusion is seen in depression delusion of negation is seen in depression which is also known as nihilistic delusion when the person believes that everything is going to end the world is going to end there would be end of existence okay this kind of delusion is usually seen along with depression okay and along with that there is pseudo dementia there is not actually dementia the person does not forget things due to some disorder it is just that he could not remember things okay and that is what is usually seen in depression that is known as pseudo dementia right then next one is your bex cognitive triad usually depression mein which triad is seen bex cognitive triad which triad is seen bex cognitive triad and if they only ask about bex triad so please remember bex triad is usually seen in cases of which disease so please remember bex triad is associated with cardiac tamponade please remember bex triad kiske sath dikhta hai cardiac tamponade whereas bex cognitive triad kiske sath dikhta hai it is seen in depression bex cognitive triad in depression what are the three features of bex cognitive triad so please remember first are the there would be ideas of worthlessness that is main kisi kaam ka nahi hu main kisi layak nahi hu that is ideas of worthlessness second is ideas of helplessness koi mujhe madad nahi karega koi mere koi mere bare mein nahi sochta hai this is what is ideas of helplessness and last is ideas of hopelessness okay nobody uh, like hopelessness i am of no use theek hai mera kisi uh, mera kisi ko koi matlab nahi hai right so please remember there would be three features first are ideas of worthlessness second are ideas of helplessness and third are ideas of hopelessness which are characterizing the bex cognitive triad please remember this right now talking about the treatment of depression so please remember guys the first line treatment of depression are usually which drugs so please remember the first line treatment of depression are usually ssris first line treatment of depression are usually ssris what are ssris selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors what are ssris selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors right please remember this so uh, for what duration is treatment given in cases of depression so please remember usually the treatment in depression is given for minimum 6 to 9 months in duration in depression the duration of treatment is minimum 6 to 9 months the duration of treatment is minimum 6 to 9 months please remember whereas in cases of chronic depression when the repression is longer lasting so in cases of chronic depression the minimum duration of treatment is 2 years chronic depression 2 years chronic depression 2 years yaad rakhna what are the side effects usually seen with ssris so please remember guys what happens as this is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor the serotonin is not reuptake and again okay so therefore there would be elevated levels so increased levels of serotonin which can lead to the serotonin syndrome please remember it can lead to what it can lead to serotonin syndrome which causes excessive vasodilation excessive flushing okay so please remember what are the side effects of ssris it can lead to serotonin syndrome okay please remember excessive flushing would be seen and what is the drug of choice for serotonin syndrome so the drug of choice for serotonin syndrome is 
सिप्रोहेप्टाडीन द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर सीरेटोन इन सिंड्रोम वुड बी सिप्रोहेप्टाडीन राइट प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस मूविंग फर्दर नाउ इन डिप्रेशन यूजली नॉट ओनली द ड्रग्स आर गोइंग टू हेल्प राइट देर फोर देर शुड बी सम बिहेवियरल थेरेपी और देर शुड बी सम साइकोथेरेपी विच वुड हेल्प अलॉन्ग विद द ड्रग्स सो द फर्स्ट लाइन साइकोथेरेपी विच इज प्रेफर्ड इन केस ऑफ डिप्रेशन इज वॉट इट इज योर सी बी टी ओके कॉग्नेटिव बिहेवियरल थेरेपी विच इज द फर्स्ट लाइन साइकोथेरेपी यूज इन केस ऑफ डिप्रेशन द फर्स्ट लाइन साइकोथेरेपी वुड बी सी बी टी दैट इज कॉग्नेटिव बिहेवियरल थेरेपी दैट वॉज ऑल्सो यूज इन केसेस ऑफ स्किजो फ्रीनिया याद रखना ये ओके मूविंग फर्दर Now, what is the treatment of choice for depression with suicidal risk? Okay, usually depression. If it happens, if there is long-term depression or there is severe depression, the person would feel like he should give his life, right? So there, it is associated with suicide in most of the cases. So depression is associated with suicidal risk. Now, what should be the treatment of choice? Definitely, it cannot be only managed by drugs or CBT. Therefore. For treat for depression with suicidal risk, the treatment of choice would be electroconvulsive therapy. Please remember ECT or electroconvulsive therapy is the treatment of choice for depression along with suicidal risk. Okay, only if there is depression, please remember electroconvulsive therapy should not be used. If only isolated depression is there, ECT should not be used in any case. याद रख लेना. Only and only if depression is associated with Uh, suicidal risk then and then only it should be what it should be treated with electroconvulsive therapy ect now moving further to our next disorder that is our bipolar disorder agli disorder kaun si hai that is bipolar disorder bipoles do alag alag poles hai right so please remember bipolar means do alag alag poles we can see happiness also and we can see sadness also that do, that is what we mean by bipolar disorder right so let's see what we have in bipolar disorder now talking about bipolar disorder guys it is mainly classified into two types right so please remember bipolar disorder or bpd we will call it as it is classified as bpd1 and bpd2 please remember so bpd1 is characterized by mania along with depression whereas bpd2 is characterized by hypomania along with depression so what actually happens in mania okay we have discussed about depression enough right depression ke bare mein tumhe pata lag gaya so how is mania characterized mania mein hota kya hai so please remember we'll discuss some few features about mania right kya kya hoga sabse pehle there would be a elevated mood okay the person would be happy all the time okay without any cause right so there would be elevated mood mood sometimes it can also turn irritable so there can be irritability also right please remember this then there would be decreased need for sleep uh, depression mein kya ho raha tha there was insomnia the patient could not sleep whereas in cases of mania there is decreased need of sleep the patient does not want to sleep <coughs> then the patient is over talkative okay the person is over talkative bag bag karta rehta hai bas 24 ghante right then there is increased self esteem there is delusion of grandeur we have discussed right so please remember there is delusion of grandeur in this delusion of grandeur the person or the patient believes that he has some special role identity or power okay so please remember wo usko lagega ki main kahi ka raja hu okay ya main shahrukh khan hu so these are the ideas which are usually seen in cases of delusion of grandeur and delusion of grandeur is seen in which disease <coughs> sorry it is seen in cases of mania <coughs> along with that the person is easily distractible so distractibility would be seen there would be no concentration okay so please remember distractibility is usually seen in case uh, in these cases right so please remember these are some few important points which are characterizing mania okay depression ke bare mein to humne dekh hi liya tha so please remember this now okay and what do we mean by hypomania then hypomania is nothing but a milder form of mania hypomania is nothing but a milder form of mania ye yaad rakh lena next okay symptoms along with these symptoms there would also be flight of ideas as we have discussed earlier okay please remember flight of ideas is a disorder of what it is a disorder of form of uh, it is a disorder of stream of thought okay it is a disorder of stream or flow of thought usually what happens in cases of flight of ideas that the stream of uh, the stream or the flow of thought is increased okay consecutive thoughts coming uh, come in mind one after the other bahut jaldi jaldi dimag mein thoughts aate rehte hain 
ओके बहुत जल्दी जल्दी दिमाग में थॉट्स आते रहते हैं सो so, ये जो जल्दी हो जाती है दिस इज वॉट इज फ्लाइट ऑफ आइडिया दिस इज वॉट इज फ्लाइट ऑफ आइडियाज राइट सो प्लीज रिमेंबर फ्लाइट ऑफ आइडियाज आर यूजली सीन इन केसेस ऑफ मेनिया फ्लाइट ऑफ आइडियाज आर यूजली सीन इन केसेस ऑफ मेनिया वेर एज वी हैव ऑल्सो डिस्कस्ड अ लेस रैपिड फ्लाइट ऑफ आइडियाज विच इज ऑल्सो ऑर्डर्ड ठीक है एक लेस रैपिड फ्लाइट ऑफ आइडियाज थी विच इज ऑल्सो डिसऑर्डर ऑफ स्ट्रीम और फ्लो ऑफ थॉट दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड ऑलरेडी दैट इज वॉट प्रोलेक्सिटी उसको क्या बोलते हैं हम प्रोलेक्सिटी एंड लेस रैपिड फ्लाइट ऑफ आइडियाज वुड बी सीन इन अ माइल्डर फॉर्म ऑफ मेनिया सो देर फॉर प्रोलेक्सिटी इज यूजली सीन इन केसेस ऑफ हाइपो मेनिया प्रोलेक्सिटी इज यूजली सीन इन केसेस ऑफ हाइपो मेनिया राइट द निहलिस्टिक डिलीजन ऑफ डिलीजन ऑफ नेगेशन दे आर यूजली सीन इन केसेस ऑफ डिप्रेशन एंड एलिवेटेड मूड अगेन इन केसेस ऑफ मेनिया और हाइपो मेनिया राइट नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट द ड्यूरेशन हाउ टू डायग्नोज दिस बी पी डी सो प्लीज रिमेंबर इन केसेस ऑफ बाइपोलर डिसऑर्डर डैश इफ द elevated mood or the symptoms of mania are lasting for 7 days then it is diagnosed as mania if the symptoms are lasting for 7 days then it is diagnosed as mania but if the symptoms are lasting for 4 days then it is considered as hypomania okay so please remember mania mein symptoms bhi predominant honge aur duration bhi zyada hai that is 7 days whereas in cases of hypomania symptoms bhi mild honge aur duration bhi kam hai that is 4 days okay please remember this okay and what happens usually in bipolar disorder so there would be alternating mania and depression or hypomania and depression okay so please remember there should be at least 7 days of manic symptoms or 4 days of hypomanic symptoms then and then only it can be characterized as bipolar disorder okay usually the patient is depressed throughout okay but at least there should be 7 days of manic symptoms and 4 days of hypomanic symptoms then and then only it is characterized as what then and then only it is characterized as bipolar disorder please remember this right important one next now talking about acute mania if the patient presents to you in acute episode of mania right idhar se udhar utha utha patak kar raha hai bahut cheeze fake raha hai okay he is harming anybody he is harming himself okay so please remember this is usually a person of acute mania which presents to you so please remember guys in cases of acute mania the drug of choice would be what and here we make mistake so please remember guys here we tend to make mistakes what happens in cases of acute mania the drug of choice are what a typical antipsychotics the drug of choice for acute mania are a typical antipsychotics yaad rakhna we tend to mark it as lithium so please remember lithium is not the only drug of choice okay so if asked in cases of acute mania the best answer would be Please remember a typical antipsychotics along with lithium. Okay, best answer क्या होगा? The drug of choice for acute mania, a typical antipsychotics along with lithium. But in case अगर सब अलग-अलग दिया है, then the first preference should go with a typical antipsychotics. First preference goes with a typical antipsychotics. Why not with lithium? So please remember, lithium is a mood stabilizing agent. Okay, lithium is a mood stabilizing agent which takes time to act. okay and in cases of acute episodes of mania usually we need to calm down the patient and which is usually done with this antipsychotic drugs right and antipsychotics why not typical antipsychotics as we already know guys that typical antipsychotics have harmful side effects like the extra pyramidal symptoms therefore why we want to pose a threat to patient's life with this therefore we prefer a typical antipsychotics along with lithium right So and what is the therapeutic dose of lithium the question have been repeated twice please remember the therapeutic dose of lithium is 1 to 1.5 mg per deciliter what is the therapeutic dose of lithium 1 to 1.5 mg per deciliter please remember this okay and what is the maintenance dose this therapeutic dose of lithium is for acute mania okay this therapeutic dose of lithium that is 1 to 1.5 mg per deciliter is in cases of acute mania if we need to just put the patient on maintenance therapy okay abhi acute mean uh, acute episode of mania resolve ho chuka hai and now we need to just maintain the patient so in cases of maintenance therapy lithium ka dose kitna ho jayega lithium should be 0.6 to 1.2 mg per deciliter so maintenance therapy 0.6 to 1.2 mg per deciliter maintenance therapy 0.6 to 1.2 mg per deciliter whereas acute episodes mein 1 to 1.5 mg per deciliter yaad rakhna if in case any time if this lithium is given more than the extra more than the prescribed dose that is more than 1.5 mg per deciliter and if it causes lithium toxicity okay if lithium causes lithium toxicity 
then what happens the patient would present with coarse tremors okay the patient would present with coarse tremors would be there along with that there would be ataxia okay the patient would not be able to balance himself that is ataxia would be there along with that there would be brisk reflexes so yaad rakhna what do we mean by brisk brisk matlab exaggerated matlab bade hue right there would be brisk or exaggerated reflexes right so these usually would be seen in cases of lithium toxicity and what is the treatment of choice for lithium toxicity so please remember guys the treatment of choice for lithium toxicity would be peg lavage what do we mean by peg peg is polyethylene glycol wo wala peg nahi okay it is polyethylene glycol please remember so usually a lavage a gastric lavage is performed along with uh, in cases of lithium toxicity with peg yaad rakh lena hai okay so the treatment of choice for lithium toxicity would be polyethylene glycol lavage right important one so this is about your bipolar disorder when the patient is experiencing depressed mood or depression along with minimum 7 days of manic symptoms or 4 days of hypomanic symptoms according to that it would be either diagnosed as bpd1 or bpd2 right acute episodes of mania drug of choice would be or typical antipsychotics along with lithium right only one answer or typical antipsychotics right yaad rakh lena and lithium toxicity ke liye treatment of choice is peg lavage moving further to our next one those are our mood disorders okay next kya hai next in line are our mood disorders so let's discuss important so now talking about our mood disorders okay we were discussing about our mood disorders so let's speak about our mood disorders to chalte hai aage right so in mood disorders there are some important definitions that you need to remember guys first one is dysthymia on which questions have been asked twice in the examination so please remember what do we mean by dysthymia dysthymia is also called as persistent depressive disorder इस नाम से तो पता ही चल गया होगा सो वट डू वी मीन बाई डिस्थाइमिया डिस्थाइमिया इज परसिस्टेंट डिप्रेसिव डिसऑर्डर सो दिस इज कैरेक्टराइज बाई माइल्ड डिप्रेशन विदाउट सोशियो ऑक्यूपेशनल डिसफंक्शन ओके सो याद रखना यूजअली डिप्रेशन में क्या होता है द पर्सन इज हैविंग डिप्रेस्ड मूड एंड ही के नॉट फंक्शन प्रॉपरली राइट सो ही के नॉट फंक्शन इन हिज वर्क प्लेस सो और मे बी ही कुड नॉट जस्ट फंक्शन इन द the community itself okay so altogether it is known as socio occupational dysfunction right so this is usually associated with depression but in cases of dysthymia there is just mild depression which is not associated with any socio occupational dysfunction right so please remember dysthymia means depression which is very mild and not associated with socio occupational dysfunction and what is the time period for diagnosing it as dysthymia so this mild depression for lasting for more than Two years, okay, lasting for more than two years is characterized as dysthymia, and that is uh, and as that is lasting for more than two years, therefore it is considered 
persistent persistent means for a longer period of time right so persistent depressive disorder also known as dysthymia and then next one is your cyclothymia what do we mean by cyclothymia cyclothymia means mild mood disorder along with fluctuations so it is just a mild mood disorder like bipolar disorder but there would be fluctuations okay there would be episodes in between and it is known as cyclothymia because there would be irregular cycles okay kabhi khush hoga kabhi dukhi hoga okay so there would be irregular cycle cyclical hoga so therefore it is known as cyclothymia which is known as mild mood disorder along with fluctuations right now talking about a important topic that is suicide right important topic that is suicide and suicide is most commonly associated with which disease yes right along with depression yaad rakhna so now they can ask you which is the most common method of suicide okay which is the most common method of attempting suicide so the answer should be the most common method of attempting suicide is hanging a question from forensic medicine also so please remember the most common method of attempting suicide is what the most common method of attempting suicide would be hanging yaad rakh lena ye okay and the second most common method would be poisoning second most common method is poisoning now which is the most common disease or disorder associated with suicide so please remember suicide is most commonly associated along with depression suicide is most commonly associated along with depression almost 15% of all the suicides are due to depression and the second most common association would be schizophrenia almost 5 to 10% of suicides are due to schizophrenia yaad rakh lena okay so there can be other disorders like personality disorder like borderline personality or antisocial personality disorder okay and that also you can see suicides also in cases of substance abuse now for suicide which is the most common sex so please remember suicides are mostly attempted by males yaad rakh lena most commonly it is seen in males and in which age group it is seen above 45 years of age group more than 45 years of age group okay it is associated with substance abuse or it is more commonly seen in single or divorced individuals okay or individuals who are unemployed or who are suffering from chronic illnesses right so please remember most common type of suicide hanging uh, suicide method is hanging followed by poisoning most common disease associated with suicide is depression followed by schizophrenia it is more commonly seen in males more than 45 years of age group right important one now next one now coming to our some eating disorders and these are also important guys there are two main eating disorders that you need to remember there are few images like one or two images which can be asked from eating disorders also that will discuss later right so please remember this now talking about first eating disorder that is known as anorexia nervosa that is known as anorexia nervosa ओके सो प्लीज रिमेंबर सबसे पहला दिमाग में क्या होता है व्हाट डू वी मीन बाय अनोरेक्सिया अनोरेक्सिया मींस लॉस ऑफ एपेटाइट इस वजह से क्या लगता है हमें इन केसेस ऑफ अनोरेक्सिया नर्वोसा देयर वुड बी लॉस ऑफ एपेटाइट बट दिस इज अ फॉल्स थिंग ओके सो प्लीज रिमेंबर बिकॉज अनोरेक्सिया नर्वोसा इज अ मिसनोमर याद रख लेना अनोरेक्सिया नर्वोसा इट इज अ मिसनोमर ओके नो लॉस ऑफ एपेटाइट इज यूजुअली सीन इन केसेस ऑफ अनोरेक्सिया नर्वोसा ये याद रखना इट इज वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट राइट now it is more commonly seen in whom so please remember guys usually eating disorders all over we can say they are usually more common in adolescent females eating disorders are more common usually in adolescent females right almost the teenage age group of females right 17 18 19 20 those ones it is more common in adolescent females yaad rakh lena now what are the features seen in cases of anorexia nervosa so sabse pehle there would be disturbance of the body image there would be disturbance of the body image that means there is a perception okay the female perceives that she is very fat okay the female perceives that she is very fat okay though she is normal in weight she is totally normal or maybe she is less than normal she is underweight then also the female perceives this is an abnormal perception when she perceives that no no i am very fat so this is usually known as a disturbance of body image okay abnormal perception hota hai second there would be excessive fear of gaining weight okay there would be intense fear of weight gain okay bahut darti hai wo ki main aur zyada weight put on na kar lo though she is underweight she is like had a uh, have a intense fear that she would gain weight okay and the next feature there would be weight loss so please remember these females are usually underweight 
females suffering from anorexia nervosa usually underweight very important point why i'll tell you further okay yaad rakh lena ye so these are the three important features along with that what happens these anorexia nervosa females they restrict their energy intake they do not eat food okay so please remember they usually restrict their energy or food intake and then therefore they would suffer from some medical signs and symptoms of starvation right so there can be amenorrhea okay there can be lanugo there would be hypothermia in some cases right or there would be dependent body edema okay so please remember this these are usual features of anorexia nervosa right important ones now anorexia nervosa is actually classified into two types there would be first a restrictive type jo bas khana nahi khati hai okay those who avoid 50% of anorexia nervosa females are restrictive type and second one are the binge eating purging type binge eating matlab kya ek sath bahut zyada khana khana okay eating lots of food at a single point of time that is binge eating followed by purging what do we mean by purging purging is a self induced vomiting or laxation okay so the person would induce vomiting or she will go to washrooms okay or she will take some medications for um, for uh, your um, emptying her bla emptying her colon okay so please remember this is usually the binge eating purging type of females which are also seen in cases of anorexia nervosa so 50% would be restrictive type 50% would be binge eating purging type okay important one there would be episodes of binge eating followed by episodes of purging right so what would be the treatment so please remember in cases of anorexia nervosa the treatment would mainly the first line management would be behavioral therapy or psychotherapy okay the first line treatment would be what behavioral therapy yaad rakh lena okay and there can also be a drug known as ciproheptadine which can be given ciproheptadine which was also given in cases of serotonin syndrome the same drug this ciproheptadine would also induce appetite but usually there is no issue in cases of appetite therefore ciproheptadine is not preferred as a first line agent yaad rakh lena usually behavioral therapies are the first line agents uh, first line preference which is given in the treatment right important one now this was uh, one of the eating disorders that was anorexia nervosa the second type of eating disorder is usually bulimia nervosa the second type of eating disorder is bulimia nervosa okay please remember and bulimia nervosa is the most common eating disorder bulimia nervosa is the most common eating disorder bulimia nervosa is the most common eating disorder yaad rakh lena important point okay what happens in bulimia nervosa there would be episodes of binging and purging just like this one binge eating and purging type of anorexia nervosa the similar kind of features are seen in cases of bulimia nervosa but yaad rakhna if a patient presents to you with episodes of binge eating and purging type the first uh, disease to rule out would be bulimia nervosa because it is more common as compared to anorexia right and how to differentiate tum bologe sir yaar is may be binge eating purging hai is may be binge eating purging hai so how to differentiate i have already underlined one important feature and that was weight loss so yaad rakhna usually in cases of anorexia nervosa weight loss is seen these are usually underweight females whereas in cases of bulimia nervosa these females have usually normal weight okay these females are usually normal weight so this is a very important differentiating feature yaad rakh lena ye okay important one so what happens due to uh, constant purging wo induce karti rahegi vomiting so what happens due to that there would be uh induration or there would be injuries at the knuckles okay and these injuries at the knuckles would be due to this teeth okay so please remember these are known as callusy knuckles inko kya bola jayega these injured knuckles these are known as callusy knuckles then due to constant reflux of acid due to vomit in the oral cavity the teeth would be damaged leading to dental caries okay also there would be features of parotitis swelling or inflammation of the parotid gland along with that i have important feature that i have already explained you that in cases of bulimia nervosa the females would be totally uh, the females would have totally normal weight yaad rakh lena important hai right so important things also in cases of bulimia nervosa the treatment or the first line treatment would usually be psychotherapy like the cognitive behavioral therapy yaad rakh lena okay important features now moving on to some important sleep disorders okay let's discuss some few important sleep disorders on which questions can be asked from psychiatry and also from sometimes from uh, physio they have asked questions right so you need to know these important features so now 
talking about sleep stages okay usually sleep is broadly classified into how many stages it is classified into two phases first is your anarium phase that is non rapid eye movement phase and second is your rem phase that is rapid eye movement phase right for the anarium previously it was classified into four phases but now it is only classified into through two or three phases okay anarium type 1 uh, anarium stage 1 anarium stage 2 and anarium stage 3 so anarium is subdivided into three stages ye yaad rakh lena important hai right now so in non rapid eye movement sleep what happens so usually in anarium stage 2 there are some characteristic features which can be seen okay there are some characteristic features which can be seen first of all anarium stage 2 is the longest phase of sleep cycle so the question can come which is the longest phase of sleep cycle so the answer should be anarium stage 2 is the longest phase of sleep cycle along with that we can see some eeg changes that is electroencephalograph so electroencephalograph pe kya milega we can see sleep spindles and k complexes so this was a question which has been asked previously so please remember on eeg sleep spindles and k complexes are seen in which sleep cycle stage so please remember sleep spindles and k complexes are seen in anarium stage 2 they are seen in anarium stage 2 yaad rakh lena next is your anarium stage 3 so anarium stage 3 is known as deep sleep anarium stage 3 is usually known as deep sleep in that we can see delta waves on eeg so eeg pe kya dikhega delta waves so eeg pe agar delta waves dikh rahe hai iska matlab it is which phase of sleep it is deep sleep that is anarium stage 3 yaad rakh lena please remember this okay so yaad rakh lena deep sleep delta waves d for deep sleep d for delta waves easy sleep in sleep spindles and k complexes and rem stage 2 very important right yaad rakhna next is your rem sleep rem is your rapid eye movement sleep now in this this sleep is also known as paradoxical sleep rem sleep is also known as paradoxical sleep why do we call it as paradoxical sleep so please remember guys there are different wave forms which are seen on an eeg right so eeg records the electrical activity of the brain okay so in that what we can see the different wave forms will i'll just summarize it once over here you have you must have studied in physio so please remember alpha waves these alpha waves are usually seen when the patient is awake but the eyes are closed okay please remember alpha waves are usually seen when the patient is awake but the eyes are closed then second are your beta waves it these are usually seen when the patient is alert he is very attentive quick okay he is concentrating on something in that case usually we see beta waves okay then there would be theta waves theta waves are usually seen in transition phase of the sleep okay when there is transition phase of sleep then we can see these theta waves then there would be delta waves which are seen in deep sleep delta waves are usually seen in deep sleep right important one so what happens usually in cases of rem sleep we need to have these delta waves right we need to have these slow wave forms like theta or delta waves but in rem sleep if we record an eeg we usually find these beta waves okay okay this is paradoxical right it is opposite from the phenomena usually a person is sleeping so we can record either of these but no in cases of rem sleep we record these beta waves which are usually seen in alert patients so therefore rem sleep is also known as paradoxical sleep right because we can record beta waves on an eeg right next these beta waves on an eeg would be seen along with that there would be ponto geniculo occipital spikes okay which spikes are seen ponto geniculo occipital spikes are seen in rem sleep on an eeg yaad rakhna do features dikhte eeg pe rem sleep ke first is beta waves second is ponto geniculo occipital spikes now talking about a sleep disorder known as narcolepsy now talking about a sleep disorder known as narcolepsy so what is the most common feature of narcolepsy so please remember the most common feature of narcolepsy is sleep attacks most common feature of narcolepsy is what it is your sleep attacks most common feature of narcolepsy is sleep attacks the patient experiences sleep attacks any time therefore it is harmful for these patients to drive a car or to do risky activities right so please remember this so along with that there can be cataplexy cataplexy is sudden loss of tone of the muscles okay so please remember cataplexy is what cataplexy is sudden loss of the tone of the muscles of the body therefore the person falls off jahan bhi khada hai achanak se gir jayega okay so that is what is cataplexy so please remember cataplexy mein there is sudden loss of the tone of the muscles of the body important 
नेक्स्ट वन वी कैन सी टू टाइप ऑफ हेलोसिनेशन ओके इन केसेस ऑफ नार्कोलेप्सी एंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दैट टू स्लीप रिलेटेड हेलोसिनेशन वुड बी सीन इन नार्कोलेप्सी एंड दिस टू स्लीप रिलेटेड हेलोसिनेशन वुड बी हिपना गॉगिक एंड हिपना पॉम्पिक हेलोसिनेशन हिपना गॉगिक मीन्स वाइल गोइंग टू स्लीप देर वुड बी हेलोसिनेशन एंड हिपना पॉम्पिक मीन्स वाइल गेटिंग अप फ्रॉम स्लीप देर वुड बी हेलोसिनेशन इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर याद रखना ओके नेक्स्ट अलॉन्ग विद दैट देर वुड बी स्लीप पैरालिसिस ओके सो प्लीज रिमेंबर द पेशेंट वुड नॉट बी एबल टू मूव हिज मसल्स ड्यूरिंग स्लीप दैट इज वॉट इज स्लीप पैरालिसिस अलॉन्ग विद दैट देर वुड बी डिक्रीज लेटेंसी ऑफ आर एम स्लीप ओके सो आर एम स्लीप की जो ड्यूरेशन है वो घट जाएगी ओके सो प्लीज रिमेंबर देर वुड बी डिक्रीज लेटेंसी ऑफ द आर एम स्लीप दीज आर ऑल द फीचर्स यूजली सीन इन केसेस ऑफ नार्को लेप्सी विच इज अ स्लीप डिसऑर्डर याद रख लेना नेक्स्ट वन मूविंग फर्दर टॉकिंग अबाउट पैरासोमियाज टॉकिंग अबाउट पैरासोमियाज ओके सो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट पैरासोमियाज गाइज याद रखना टू इम्पॉर्टेंट डेफिनेशन दैट वी नीड टू डिफ्रेंशिएट फर्स्ट आर आर नाइट ट्रेमर्स एंड सेकेंड आर आर सॉरी फर्स्ट आर नाइट टेरर्स एंड सेकेंड आर नाइट मैर्स ओके प्लीज रिमेंबर दीज इम्पॉर्टेंट टू फीचर्स फर्स्ट इज नाइट टेरर्स एंड सेकेंड आर नाइट मैर्स ओके याद रखना दो इम्पॉर्टेंट चीज़ें क्या है नाइट टेरर्स एंड नाइट मैर्स ओके सो नाइट टेरर्स आर सीन सीन वेयर सो प्लीज रिमेंबर नाइट टेरर्स आर यूजली एसोसिएटेड विद एन आर एम स्टेज थ्री नाइट टेरर्स आर यूजली एसोसिएटेड विद एन आर एम स्टेज थ्री वेर एज नाइट मैर्स आर यूजली सीन इन आर एम स्लीप नाइट मैर्स आर यूजली सीन इन आर एम स्लीप इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस ओके सो यूजली प्लीज रिमेंबर इन केसेस ऑफ नाइट मैर्स द चाइल्ड गेट्स अप फ्रॉम स्लीप अचानक से ओके सडनली द चाइल्ड गेट्स अप फ्रॉम स्लीप एंड ही स्टार्ट ट्राइंग ओके एंड ही कैन रिकॉल द ड्रीम दैट इज वॉट इज अ नाइट मैर विच इज यूजली सीन इन केसेस ऑफ आर एम स्लीप ओके वेर एज नाइट टेरर्स दे के नॉट बी रिकॉल्ड ओके दे के नॉट बी रिकॉल्ड याद रखना दिस इज द बेसिक डिफरेंस नाउ नेक्स्ट पैरासोमिया इज योर सोमना एम्बुलिज्म नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ पैरासोमिया इज वॉट इट इज योर सोमना एम्बुलिज्म एंड वॉट डू यू मीन बाय सोमना एम्बुलिज्म इट मीन्स स्लीप वॉकिंग सोमना एम्बुलिज्म एम्बुलिज्म मतलब वॉकिंग राइट सो सोमना एम्बुलिज्म मीन्स स्लीप वॉकिंग एंड नेक्स्ट इज योर सोमनी लॉकवी वॉट डू यू मीन बाय सोमनी लॉकवी सोमनी लॉकवी मीन्स स्लीप टॉकिंग जो नींद में बड़बड़ाता है ना दैट इज वॉट इज स्लीप टॉकिंग ऑल्सो नोन है सोमनी लॉकवी एंड द लास्ट वन इंपॉर्टेंट पैरासोमिया इज ब्रक्सिजम ओके इट इज वॉट ब्रक्सिजम ब्रक्सिजम इज वॉट टीथ ग्राइंडिंग ओके सम पेशेंट्स और सम इंडिविजुअल्स हैव द दे हैव द हैबिट ऑफ ग्राइंडिंग द ट्रीज एट नाइट ओके इट मेक्स इमेंस नॉइज दैट इज वॉट इज ब्रक्सिजम ओके एंड प्लीज रिमेंबर गाइज इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर अ क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ट ब्रक्सिजम इज सीन इन विच स्टेज ऑफ स्लीप साइकिल सो प्लीज रिमेंबर ब्रक्सिजम इज यूजली सीन इन एन आर एम स्टेज टू याद रखना ब्रक्सिजम इज यूजली सीन इन एन आर एम स्टेज टू ओके प्लीज रिमेंबर ब्रक्सिजम इज सीन इन एन आर एम स्टेज टू याद रखना इंपॉर्टेंट है ओके नेक्स्ट वन देर इज अ स्लीप रिलेटेड एन्यूरसिस विच कैन बी सीन एंड दिस स्लीप रिलेटेड एन्यूरसिस इज ऑल्सो नोन एज नॉक्टर्नल एन्यूरसिस इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज नॉक्टर्नल एन्यूरसिस ऑल्सो नोन एज बेड वेटिंग नॉक्टर्नल एन्यूरसिस इज ऑल्सो नोन एज बेड वेटिंग राइट द चाइल्ड यूरिनेट्स इन द बेड इट सेल्फ एट नाइट राइट इट इज अब नॉर्मल बियॉन्ड फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ एज ओके इट इज कंसिडर्ड नॉर्मल इफ द चाइल्ड वेट्स द बेड अंटिल फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ एज इट इज कंसिडर्ड टोटली नॉर्मल बट इफ मोर देन फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ एज द चाइल्ड इज वेटिंग द बेड इट इज कंसिडर्ड अब नॉर्मल एंड दैट दिस इज नोन एज नॉक्टर्नल एन्यूरसिस The most common cause of nocturnal aneurysis is what? The most common cause is psychogenic. Most common cause of nocturnal aneurysis is psychogenic. Important, याद रखना. Then the what is the first line treatment? So please remember, guys, याद रखना हमेशा से. We tend to mark first line treatment as desmopressin. No, please remember, guys, the first line treatment would only be behavioral therapy. Okay, we'll teach the child. We'll make him a habit. of going and urinating in the toilet itself okay we can put bed alarms okay bed alarm ka image aa sakta hai we can put bed alarms okay as soon as the uh, uh, alarm senses moisture in the pants the alarm would ring aloud okay and then you can wake your child up and then can tell him that go and just uh, urinate okay so this are your bed alarms okay which is a method of behavioral therapy which is usually a first line therapy in cases of nocturnal aneurysis okay and then we can prefer drug of choice that is desmopressin usually we prefer the treatment of choice would be behavioral therapy but the drug of choice would be desmopressin if the patient is not only managed with behavioral therapy okay desmopressin which is a vasopressin or adh analog 
<coughs> right please remember this now talking about the next one guys talking about the phases of sexual response cycle not phases of sexual response cycle on this also questions have been asked again and again and again so please remember this okay so talking about the phases of sexual response cycle guys the first phase is known as desire the first phase is known as desire ichha okay so please remember first of all what happens in sexual uh, what happens in um, sexual arousal first of all there would be desire okay so there would be desire would be seen second phase would be arousal second phase is what arousal also known as excitement second phase is arousal also known as excitement in which all the physiological changes would be seen okay once the patient once the person is aroused then we can see these physiological changes and these physiological changes can be like penile erection would be there vaginal lubrication would be there right there would be erection of the nipples usually in females there would be thickening of the labia minora and the clitoris okay there would be enlargement of the testes right there would be palpitations can be felt tachycardia would be there right there would be tachypnea increased respiratory rate okay there would be increased blood pressure all of these physiological changes start happening in which phase of sexual response cycle they all occur in the arousal or the excitement phase of sexual response cycle right important one and this is a plateau phase okay in this there would be intensification of arousal unless and until the arousal is so much that it is not intensified itna nahi hai then it will not move to the next stage and the next stage is what the next stage is orgasm okay so please remember once once the arousal or the once the excitement is at its peak okay bahut zyada hai so when it is intensified then the person would land up into orgasm and orgasm only lasts for 3 to 5 seconds please remember it is the smallest phase of sexual response cycle orgasm is the smallest phase of sexual response cycle only lasting for 3 to 5 seconds okay there would be peaking of the pleasure which can finally uh, complete with ejaculation or contraction of the lower one third of the vagina okay please remember these are usually seen in cases of orgasm and the last phase of sexual response cycle would be resolution which usually takes 10 to 15 minutes right important one so these are all your phases of sexual response cycle now talking about a sexual disorder that is erectile dysfunction okay erectile dysfunction when the penis cannot attain erection the penis cannot attain erection that is known as erectile dysfunction the most common cause of erectile dysfunction question have been asked twice so please remember the most common cause of erectile dysfunction is psychogenic again most common cause of erectile dysfunction is psychogenic okay and the drug of choice which is usually preferred in cases of erectile dysfunction are what these are your phosphodiesterase inhibitors drug of choice for erectile dysfunction are phosphodiesterase inhibitors and they usually inhibit phosphodiesterase 5 phosphodiesterase 5 ko inhibit karne wali drugs kaun si hoti hai sildenafil tadalafil like drugs which drugs sildenafil tadalafil like drugs and this time uh, in june 2021 session the question was that which is the longest acting phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor and the options were like sildenafil tadalafil and all of them were given so please remember most of them have made a mistake and marked it as sildenafil please remember sildenafil is not the longest acting drug the longest acting phosphodiesterase inhibitor is tadalafil okay kya mark karoge tadalafil is the longest acting <coughs> phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor sildenafil is available in the market with the brand name as viagra okay yaad rakhna then along with the drug which can be used in cases of erectile dysfunction we also have psychotherapy which can be used right and this psychotherapy is known as masters and johnson's dual sex therapy okay what is this psychotherapy known as it is known as masters and johnson's dual sex therapy why dual because usually both of the partners are treated that is a couple is treated as a unit okay yaad rakhna in masters and johnson's dual sex therapy the couple is treated as a single unit right so please remember this <coughs> so this is known as your masters and johnson's dual sex therapy which is a psychotherapy used in cases of erectile dysfunction right important one now moving on to the further next sexual disorder that is premature ejaculation what happens at times the penis uh, can uh, attain erection properly okay it can uh, attain the erection for a longer period of time but what happens the most important point being as soon as the uh, person touches a female there would be ejaculation happening so this is known as a premature ejaculation premature ejaculation would be ejaculation 
less than one minute okay so please remember ejaculation just within a minute is known as premature ejaculation ejaculation just within a minute is known as premature ejaculation yaad rakh lena important what is the most common cause again the most common cause of premature ejaculation is also psychogenic most common cause for premature ejaculation is also psychogenic okay therefore it also should be treated with behavioral therapies usually but we also have some drug of choice what is the drug of choice for premature ejaculation it is ssris that is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors okay please remember usually ssris ka ye side effect hai that is it causes delayed ejaculation ssris have a side effect of causing delayed ejaculation and this can be used as a treatment in cases of premature ejaculation therefore ssris as considered are considered drug of choice in cases of premature ejaculation right next there would be some behavioral therapies in premature ejaculation and first of which it is the squeeze technique okay whenever you, the person feels like he is going to ejaculate then he should just squeeze the glans penis okay so please remember this is known as the squeeze technique next one is your siemens technique okay please remember next is your siemens technique which is also known as start and stop technique then when once when a person feels like he is about to ejaculate then he should stop the sexual intercourse rest for some time and then again start so this is known as the start of start and stop technique also known as siemens technique yaad rakhna so two psycho uh, behavioral therapies used in cases of premature ejaculation are squeeze technique and siemens technique and masters and johnson's dual sex therapy were was used for erectile dysfunction yaad rakh lena okay now talking about these two important definitions which can also be asked in fmt so please remember excessive sexual desire okay so excessive sexual desire in females is known as nymphomania excessive sexual desire in females is known as nymphomania whereas excessive sexual desire in males is known as satyriasis excessive sexual desire in males is known as satyriasis excessive sexual desire in females is known as nymphomania yaad rakhna okay some definitions about uh, fmt jaldi jaldi so please remember what we mean by sterility sterility is the inability to beget children okay so it is a common term used for males and females both sexes okay it is inability to beget children the couple cannot beget children that is known as sterility right what is impotency impotency is the inability to attain penile erection okay it is usually a term restricted for male sex right inability to attain penile erection is known as impotency right important and what is frigidity so please remember frigidity is decreased sexual desire in females okay what is frigidity decreased sexual desire in females and increased sexual desire in females is known as nymphomania yaad rakh lena ye important definition se from fmt now moving further guys talking about the psychiatric disorders now okay which is the most common group of psychiatric disorder if they ask which is the most common group of psychiatric disorder then the answer should be anxiety disorders most common group of psychiatric disorders the answer should be anxiety disorder because everybody of us is suffering from one or the other anxiety at some or the other point of time right so exam se pehle anxiety ho jati hai kuch naya nayi cheez karne se pehle anxiety ho jati hai so everybody of us are apprehensive about things okay so everybody of us in some or the other way are suffering from anxiety disorders okay but when the apprehension or these palpitations are over the limit okay they cannot be managed so the, therefore the person suffers from anxiety disorders okay so please remember the most common group of psychiatric disorders are anxiety disorder most common group of psychiatric disorders are anxiety disorder next question can be most common individual psychiatric disorder if they ask most common individual psychiatric disorder then the answer should be specific phobia okay kisi ek cheez ke bare mein dar lagna ya phobia hona that is specific phobia okay most common individual psychiatric disorder is specific phobia but a similar kind of question we have already discussed most common individual psychiatric disorder but the only term added was in india then the answer changes then the answer would be depression yaad rakh lena okay most common group of psychiatric disorder anxiety disorder most common individual psychiatric disorder worldwide specific phobia most common individual psychiatric disorder in india answer is depression yaad rakh lena unipolar depression yaad rakhna right important one Now, what do we mean by panic attack, guys? So please remember, panic attack is usually a feeling of impending doom. What happens in panic attack? So please remember, guys, panic attack me the person experiences a feeling of impending doom. What do we mean by a feeling of impending doom? It is an acute attack of intense anxiety. There is so ex so much of excessive anxiety that the patient is not able to 
just um, cope up with it okay so there is excessive uh, acute anxiety which is seen in cases of panic attack which is also known as feeling of impending doom okay please remember the patient experiences that he is almost about to die this is what is known as feeling of impending doom that is seen in panic attack right so now what is the drug of choice for panic attack so please remember the drug of choice for short term panic attacks if it is lasting for shorter duration of time short term ke liye the drug of choice would be benzodiazepines okay so just for panic attack the drug of choice would be benzodiazepine for panic attacks the drug of choice would be benzodiazepines usually okay but if it is for longer duration of time it is longer long term or if the person is experiencing recurrent panic attacks recurrent and unexpected panic attacks then it is characterized as a psych panic disorder then it will be characterized as panic disorder when the patient experiences recurrent and repeated panic attacks right then it is characterized as panic disorder so in cases of panic disorder again the treatment would be same the drug of choice for short term disorder would be benzodiazepines and long term disorder would be ssrs short term benzodiazepines long term ssrs short terms benzodiazepines long term ssrs important hai yaad rakh lena okay along with that we can also add on a psychotherapy along with these drugs like the cognitive behavioral therapy can be added right important one now moving further guys to next one most common individual psychiatric disorder that we discussed and what was that yes that was specific phobia that was what specific phobias important one so specific phobias is usually a strong and persistent and a irrational fear of an object or a situation kisi cheez se dar lagna aur kisi situation se dar lagna okay that is very strong feeling of fear which is persistent which is lasting for a longer duration of time and it is irrational without any logic or reason so that is what is characterized as specific phobia please remember this okay so specific phobias are usually treated with behavioral therapy स्पेसिफिक फोबियाज के लिए फर्स्ट लाइन ट्रीटमेंट क्या होगा बिहेवियरल थेरेपी एंड दीज आर योर सिस्टमिक डिसेंसिटाइजेशन सिस्टमैटिक डिसेंसिटाइजेशन सो वॉट हैपन्स इन सिस्टमैटिक डिसेंसिटाइजेशन इट इज अ स्टेप वाइज एक्सपोजर विथ रिलैक्सेशन टेक्निक्स ओके सो इफ फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ सम पर्सन इज अफ्रेड ऑफ डॉग्स ही हैज अ फियर ऑफ डॉग्स सो वॉट हैपन्स एट फर्स्ट विल शो हिम अ पिक्चर ऑफ डॉग ओके नेक्स्ट टाइम will show a dog from 2 kilometers away then next time we'll take him much closer and then in the next time we can ask the patient to uh, go and touch the dog okay so this is what is a step wise approach along with relaxation techniques would be there okay so this is what is systematic desensitization to desensitize the patient of his fear right first one psychotherapy that is seen second psychotherapy it is usually known as flooding okay so please remember second psychotherapy is known as flooding flooding mein highest exposure directly le gaye aur usko directly kutta uske upar bitha diya so that is what is known as flooding but flooding is not commonly practiced right important one next is your participant modeling so participant modeling mein usually the doctor participates okay the doctor helps the patient out so this is known as participant modeling right important one so these are the different types of behavioral therapies which are used to treat specific phobias now let's see different types of specific phobias on which questions have been asked the definitions have been asked so please remember first one is your agoraphobia ye definition kam se kam teen bar puchi gayi hai so please remember what do we mean by agoraphobia agoraphobia is a fear of open crowded and closed spaces okay so please remember agoraphobia means a fear of open crowded and closed spaces usually the question would describe that the patient is afraid to go on a playground the patient is afraid to go on pilgrimage or uh, very crowded places or in the market or the person is afraid of going into the lift because it is enclosed right so fear of open crowded and enclosed spaces is known as what it is known as agoraphobia very important definition next is okay some important phobias let's see fear of height is known as what fear of height is known as acrophobia fear of height is known as acrophobia fear of enclosed spaces only is known as claustrophobia fear of enclosed spaces if the patient is only afraid of going inside a lift or, or staying in a clo uh, closed room then that is known as claustrophobia okay and as we all know radio's important question claustrophobia is a relative contraindication of mri okay usually in mri the patient has to stay for a longer period of time in that isolated machine right and if a patient is claustrophobic the patient can experience anxiety right therefore claustrophobia is a relative contraindication for performing mri 
important one next is your dark fear of dark is known as nyctophobia fear of dark is known as nyctophobia fear of germs or dirt is known as mesophobia fear of germs or dirt is known as mesophobia fear of cats is known as ailurophobia fear of cats is known as ailurophobia and fear of dogs is known as cynophobia fear of dogs is known as cynophobia fear of strangers is known as xenophobia fear of strangers is known as xenophobia and last fear of pain is known as algophobia fear of pain is known as algophobia so these are all latin terms if you are good in latin these would become quite easier for you ओके सो जल्दी से एक बार रिवाइज करते हैं फियर ऑफ ओपन क्राउडेड एंड क्लोज स्पेसेस अग्राफोबिया फियर ऑफ एनक्लोज स्पेसेस क्लोस्ट्रोफोबिया फियर ऑफ कैट्स आइलोरोफोबिया फियर ऑफ डॉग्स साइनोफोबिया फियर ऑफ पेन एल्गोफोबिया फियर ऑफ हाइट एक्रोफोबिया फियर ऑफ डार्क निक्टोफोबिया फियर ऑफ जर्म्स और डर्ट मीसोफोबिया राइट एंड फियर ऑफ स्ट्रेंजर्स जीनोफोबिया इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ गाइज मूविंग फर्दर टू आर नेक्स्ट वन दैट इज ओ सी डी दैट इज obsessive compulsive disorder moving further to our next one that is ocd that is obsessive compulsive disorder important one okay so let's discuss about ocd guys so here ocd okay obsessive compulsive disorder in that what happens usually there are obsessions and what do we mean by obsession so please remember there is a difference between obsessions and compulsions right so what are obsession and what are compulsions important cheez yaad rakh lena so obsessions are repetitive intrusive thoughts which are coming on keeping in mind okay so there would be repetitive intrusive thoughts or images or impulses that can lead to anxiety okay there would be repetitive thoughts ki your hands are dirty mere haath gande hai mere haath gande hai so this is a repetitive repetitive thought which is come in the patient's mind right so patient knows that these are a product of their own mind okay so please remember the patient is uh, sure that ye usi ke dimag ke upar hai okay and the patient also finds that these are irrational so koi matlab nahi hai okay these are senseless thoughts but then also he cannot avoid these thoughts and these are known as obsessions okay these are known as obsessions right and therefore to neutralize these obsessions the patient needs to perform some things okay the person attains some behavior and these behaviors are known as compulsions okay to just get rid of these obsessions the person needs to <coughs> repeat some behavior or do some mental acts okay and all these mental acts which are performed in response to these obsessions are known as compulsions right so and they can help you relieve uh, relieve the anxiety temporarily for a shorter period of time right so these are known as obsessive compulsive disorder so obsessive compulsive disorder is diagnosed for it if the symptoms are lasting for duration more than 2 weeks if symptoms are lasting for a duration more than 2 weeks then we diagnose it as ocd okay these are ego dystonic what do we mean by ego dystonic that the patient knows that these are senseless these are this do, uh, do not uh, like agree to myself so the patient is not agreeable to these thoughts okay the patient is not agreeable to these thoughts but then also he cannot avoid these thoughts and therefore it is known as ego dystonic if they occur according to patient's will then it would be known as ego syntonic if the patient uh, if the disease is agreeable to self it is known as ego syntonic if it is not agreeable to self it is known as ego dystonic and ocd is ego dystonic yaad rakh lena then which is the most common type of ocd so please remember there is a obsession of contamination of dirty hands and compulsion of hand washing so this is the most common type of ocd okay next one your psychotherapy psychotherapy is usually preferred in cases of ocd right and the psychotherapy preferred in cases of ocd question have been asked twice in the examination what is the answer the answer would be exposure and response prevention okay you ask the patient to make his hands dirty in the soil itself and then you ask the patient to stop not to wash his hands for a longer period of time though the patient is getting repetitive thoughts in mind then also you are preventing the response okay so this is what is exposure and response prevention which is the psychotherapy usually preferred in cases of obsessive compulsive disorder okay got it important one now moving further guys to next one that is post traumatic stress disorder next one is your post traumatic stress disorder so now talking about ptsd guys so ptsd so post traumatic stress disorder it usually follows a traumatic event if the patient has experienced a loss of someone really close to him or the patient has experienced a traumatic accident okay so there would be a traumatic event after which the patient has started experiencing these uh, anxiety symptoms usually okay 
so please remember usually the person feels like there is a serious threat of injury to the self or others also okay so this usually happens along with accidents or war or earthquakes floods okay all these serious accidents they can lead to this ptsd post traumatic stress disorder okay there are three important classical symptoms which are seen in cases of ptsd and what are these three important classical symptoms of ptsd so first of all important would be flashbacks there would be intrusion symptoms okay the patient would experience flashbacks agar uh, somebody has experienced an accident in the past the whenever the person sits in a car the person would get flashback and he'll get away from the car he will say that i do not want to uh, be a I, i do not want to sit in the car okay because he is getting this constant flashbacks next there would be avoidance okay so the person would avoid sitting in a car that is what is avoidance and last there would be arousal symptoms and what do we mean by arousal symptoms so please remember there would be excessive anxiety seen okay arousal symptoms are excessive anxiety the person would be hyper vigilant okay idhar udhar dekhta rahega okay exaggerated startle response would be there all of these things are usually seen in cases of post traumatic stress disorder and it is diagnosed if these symptoms are lasting for more than one month so please remember if these symptoms are lasting for more than one month then and then only it is diagnosed as post traumatic stress disorder okay if these symptoms are lasting for less than one month it is known as acute stress disorder if symptoms last for less than one month then it is known as acute stress disorder and if the symptoms are lasting for and and if the symptoms occur after six months okay so if a accident occurred in december and the patient is experiencing symptoms in june so this is known as ptsd of delayed onset okay if the patient experiences symptom after six months then this is known as ptsd of delayed onset yaad rakhna okay so this is what is ptsd what are what is the drug of choice for ptsd so please remember usually the drug of choice for ptsd are your ssris or benzodiazepines okay the drug of choice for ptsd are your ssris or benzodiazepines so yaad rakhna ye important hai right important one along with that the treatment of choice what is the treatment of choice for ptsd so the treatment of choice for ptsd would be cbt that is cognitive behavioral therapy the drugs are not going to help much okay so the treatment of choice would be cognitive behavioral therapy important one right now moving further to the stages of death okay on this question have been asked in aims vagera so please remember what are the stages of death there are five stages of death which can be remembered by the mnemonic dabda okay the stages of death are remembered by the mnemonic dabda okay so please remember first is your denial or shock okay once you lose some person who is very close to you okay a death of a closed one first of all you will land you up into denial or shock pehle to tum accept hi nahi karoge ki aisa kuch hua hai ya fir you will go into a complete shock okay so the first stage would be denial or shock then a goes for anger then you will express your anger on this situation ye kyu hua aisa kyu hua okay that is your anger next b goes for your bargaining then you will try to bargain nahi nahi aisa nahi hua hai wo wapas aayega okay the person would come back okay he uh, he is not like he has not left us okay so that is what is bargaining next d goes for depression then the person goes in depression right and last a goes for acceptance so then over a period of time the person accepts okay that this person is not in between us and then finally the person accepts this fact so this is known as dabda first is denial shock second is anger third is bargaining fourth is depression and fifth is acceptance so which are the five stages of death yaad rakhna now let's see some disorders important one jinke definitions puche jate hai bar bar and that you need to know so please remember guys first one if a person is preoccupied with somatic symptoms if a person is preoccupied with somatic symptoms like wo bol raha hai ki mera pet dukh raha hai mera haath dukh raha hai okay so i am having stomach ache i am having headache okay all of these are somatic symptoms okay a person is preoccupied with somatic symptoms though he is not experiencing any pain though he is not experiencing any body ache anything then also the patient compl- keeps on complaining about somatic symptoms then this is known as somatic symptom disorder then this is known as somatic symptom disorder also known as somatization disorder somatic symptom disorder also known as somatization disorder okay the per- so please remember there would be some somatic symptoms which are present but the patient shows excessive concern about these milder symptoms okay the person is preoccupied totally with these symptoms then second if the person is preoccupied with physical illness 
if the person is preoccupied with some physical illness right if the person experiences that no no i am having some physical illness mere pet mein to kuch gadbadi hai i am having some cancer wagera but all the investigations everything would be normal okay so all the investigations are normal you try to reassure the patient that you are totally normal you are absolutely normal he would not believe in you okay so the person is preoccupied with the idea of having a serious illness okay so this is what is known as hypochondriasis this is known as hypochondriasis so preoccupation with physical illness is known as hypochondriasis okay so please remember it is known as hypochondriasis also known as illness anxiety disorder so hypochondriasis according to dsm 5 is also known as illness anxiety disorder yaad rakhna and last if the patient is preoccupied with a body defect though she is absolutely normal it is usually seen in adolescent females again though she is absolutely normal she experiences that ni meri naak teedi hai okay i have a uh, crooked nose so this is usually a, uh, the person is ex- occupied preoccupied with body defect so this would be called as a body dysmorphic disorder body dysmorphic disorder imagine uh, okay it is a imaginary defect that the person feels okay important now moving further to our next one and the important one is a dissociative disorder known as conversion disorder okay there are some different types of dissociative disorder what do we mean by dissociation so dissociation is actually the disruption in normally integrated functions of memory identity perception consciousness and motor behavior okay iska matlab kya hota hai so please remember the per, uski memory mein koi gadbadi hai the person's identity is somewhat defective the person's perception is abnormal okay consciousness mein koi dikkat aa rahi hai or the person is having abnormal motor behavior so all of these agar ye ek sath nahi chal raha hai so this is what is known as dissociation right there is not in no integration seen right so that is what is dissociation and there are some dissociative disorders which can be seen out of it there would can be dissociative amnesia right then there can be dissociative fugue which is seen usually then there would be dissociative identity disorder and this dissociative identity disorder that is important guys dissociative identity disorder okay is also known as multiple personality disorder ये तुमने अपरिचित जो मूवी थी उसमें देखा होगा ओके दैट इज नोन एज डिसोसिएटिव आइडेंटिटी डिसऑर्डर और मल्टीपल पर्सनालिटी डिसऑर्डर द पर्सन इज हैविंग टू और मोर पर्सनालिटीज ओके सो एक ही इंडिविजुअल में दो दो तीन तीन पर्सनालिटीज होती है ओके दैट इज नोन एज डिसोसिएटिव आइडेंटिटी डिसऑर्डर और मल्टीपल पर्सनैलिटी डिसऑर्डर देन देर कैन बी डिसोसिएटिव पोजेशन ट्रांस डिसऑर्डर ओके हियर द इंडिविजुअल हियर द इंडिविजुअल पर्सनैलिटी इज टेकन ओवर बाय अनादर पर्सनैलिटी that is dissociative possession trans disorder important one now one more important dissociative disorder that we are going to discuss that is dissociative neurological symptom disorder and this dissociative neurological symptom disorder is also known as conversion disorder it is also known as conversion disorder so isme what happens the symptoms are of neurological deficit without a cause okay so the symptoms are suggestive of some neurological deficit but the cause cannot be found okay the cause cannot be found so the symptoms are telling that there is some neurological deficit lying in the brain but if we perform all the investigations no cause can be determined okay so that is usually seen in cases of conversion disorder which is also known as dissociative neurological symptom disorder right in this what happens there would be some motor symptoms some sensory symptoms or there can be some pseudo seizures okay so please remember and in this the patient would experience la bele indifference the patient would experience la bele indifference that the patient is uh, like he or she does not have any concern about the symptoms though he is experiencing from some neurological deficit he is totally like uh, like there is no significance for him of these symptoms okay he is totally uh and not concerned about these symptoms and this is what is known as la bele indifference so the question i have been asked la bele indifference phenomena is seen in which disorder so please remember la bele indifference phenomena is seen in conversion disorder right important one and next one is munchausen syndrome guys important one 
मंचाउसन सिंड्रोम ओके सो मंचाउसन सिंड्रोम इज ऑल्सो नोन है सूडोलोजिया फैंटास्टिका मंचाउसन सिंड्रोम इज ऑल्सो नोन है सूडोलोजिया फैंटास्टिका इट इज ऑल्सो नोन है फैक्टीशियस डिसऑर्डर इट इज ऑल्सो नोन है फैक्टीशियस डिसऑर्डर वेयर द पर्सन वुड जनरेट द सिम्टम्स विलफुली खुद ही जनरेट करेगा ओके सो देर इज विलफुल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द सिम्टम्स जस्ट टू गेट मेडिकल अटेंशन उसको मेडिकल अटेंशन चाहिए इसलिए खुद ही कुछ भी करता रहेगा ओके ही क्रिएट सम आर्टिफिशियल ब्लूज ऑन द स्किन ओके ही कंप्लेन ऑफ सम वीक सिम्टम्स ओके सो दैट इज यूजली सीन इन केसेस ऑफ मंचाउसन सिंड्रोम विच इज ऑल्सो नोन है सूडोलोजिया फैंटास्टिका और फैक्टीशियस डिसऑर्डर एंड इफ अ मदर क्रिएट सम सिम्टम्स फॉर हर चाइल्ड ओके सो दैट इज नोन एज मंचाउसन सिंड्रोम बाई प्रॉक्सी इफ यू परफॉर्म इट ऑन समन एल्स फॉर अदर्स देन इट इज नोन एज मंचाउसन सिंड्रोम बाय प्रॉक्सी ओके सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस now there would be malingering also malingering is also common disorder which is usually seen what we mean by malingering important hai malingering is not actually a psycho psychiatric disorder it is just willful production of the symptoms uh, for conscious or in external incentives okay ki kisi se paisa lena hai ya fir uh, just to avoid any legal case or legal action on himself or herself or to just avoid any tough job okay so patient uh, will attain a role of sick person so that is usually seen in malingering cases right and treatment in malingering is usually a psychotherapy right important one now moving further guys talking about the next one that is a very important topic known as substance abuse which is very important from forensic point of view also so let's discuss few important points now which is the most common substance abuse in india सो हर एक के हाथ में तो तंबाकू दिखती है यहाँ पे सो द मोस्ट कॉमन सब्सटेंस अब इन इंडिया इज टोबैको मोस्ट कॉमन सब्सटेंस अब इन इंडिया इज टोबैको मोस्ट कॉमन सब्सटेंस अब इन इंडिया इज टोबैको वेर एज द मोस्ट कॉमन सब्सटेंस अब यूज वर्ल्ड वाइड इज ऑल्कोहॉल मोस्ट कॉमन सब्सटेंस अब यूज वर्ल्ड वाइड इज ऑल्कोहॉल गाइज राइट इंपॉर्टेंट वन नाउ बट प्लीज रिमेंबर गाइज टोबैको और ऑल्कोहॉल दीज आर नॉट इलिसिट सब्सटेंसेस दीज आर नॉट इलीगल सब्सटेंसेस सो विच इज द मोस्ट कॉमन इलीगल और मोस्ट कॉमन इलिसिट सब्सटेंस विच इज अब्यूज इन इंडिया और वर्ल्ड वाइड द आंसर वुड रिमेन सेम ओके इंडिया पूछे या वर्ल्ड वाइड पूछे अगर इलिसिट सब्सटेंस या इलीगल सब्सटेंस के बारे में पूछ रहे देन द आंसर वुड बी वन एंड ओनली कैन बी सो प्लीज रिमेंबर मोस्ट कॉमन इलिसिट सब्सटेंस अब्यूज इन इंडिया और वर्ल्ड वाइड इज कैन बीज ओके इट इज कैन बीज इंपॉर्टेंट वन right now let's discuss one by one important one first of all we'll talk about alcohol intoxication sabse pehle kiske bare mein dekhte hain alcohol intoxication so what is bac so please remember bac is blood alcohol concentration blood alcohol concentration okay so if a person is intoxicated with alcohol the person can die if the blood alcohol concentration is more than 300 mg per deciliter if the blood alcohol concentration is more than 300 mg per deciliter the person would die please remember this what is the legal limit of taking alcohol so this is given by the uh, road transport organization right rto ne diya hai ye limit okay so a person if is a driving a car okay the low, uh, legal limit for driving a car should be blood alcohol concentration less than 30 mg per deciliter blood alcohol concentration less than 30 mg per deciliter if the concentration is above this the person would experience penalty right important one now in cases of alcohol intoxication there are some screening questionnaires that can uh, that would be asked okay and what are these screening questionnaires so the most important screening questionnaire is known as a cage questionnaire so most important one is a <coughs> cage questionnaire so where c goes for cut down a goes for uh, annoyed G goes for guilt and E goes for eye opener. Okay, so please remember one by one we start asking questions like, uh, are you willing to cut down on your alcohol? Then second is your, are you annoyed with the habit of taking alcohol? Third, do you have any guilt of uh, if you take alcohol? And last, like if there is an eye opener, if he really wants to quit the alcohol, right? So this is a cage questionnaire which is usually asked in cases of alcohol intoxication. so please remember this uh, this is a question which i have been once asked in the examination right so please remember then there is one more questionnaire known as audit that is alcohol use disorder identification test known as audit and last is sad q that is severity of alcohol disorder questionnaire right important one now um just uh will <coughs> discuss about a very important syndrome known as wernicke's korsakoff syndrome kaun sa syndrome wernicke's Korsakoff syndrome, which is usually seen in chronic alcoholics. So please remember, guys, Wernicke's Korsakoff syndrome is usually seen in chronic 
alcoholics so it has two components wernicke's encephalopathy and second korsakoff psychosis it has two components wernicke's encephalopathy and second korsakoff's psychosis why does wernicke's korsakoff syndrome occurs it occurs due to deficiency of vitamin b1 it occurs due to deficiency of vitamin b1 yaad rakh lena vitamin b1 aur uh, thiamine deficiency leads to wernicke's korsakoff syndrome yaad rakhna okay this is the main cause so what is the triad which is seen in cases of wernicke's encephalopathy that can be remembered with the mnemonic goa yaad rakhna in wernicke's encephalopathy there is a triad which is seen which is character uh, which is uh, summed up in the mnemonic goa where g goes for global confusion g goes for global confusion then o goes for ophthalmoplegia o goes for ophthalmoplegia and a goes for ataxia okay what are the three features of wernicke's encephalopathy g for global confusion o for ophthalmoplegia and a for ataxia yaad rakhna g for global confusion o for ophthalmoplegia a for ataxia these are the three features of wernicke's encephalopathy okay then what can we see in korsak of psychosis so please remember guys in korsak of psychosis usually the patient experiences amnesia that is memory loss what do we mean by amnesia memory loss and the patient characteristically the most common characteristic feature okay the most characteristic feature of korsak of psychosis kya hai it is confabulation most characteristic feature of korsak of psychosis is confabulation what do we mean by confabulation that is making of false stories to just fill up the memory gaps as we all know during alcohol intoxication the patient experiences anterograde amnesia usually right anterograde matlab peene ke baad se usko kuch yaad nahi rehta that is anterograde amnesia right so just to fill up the memory gaps while he is telling some story the patient tries to make false stories so okay that phenomena is known as confabulations right which is seen in korsakoff's psychosis okay which is the most common site which is affected in cases of wernicke's korsakoff syndrome so please remember there would be atrophy of these mammillary bodies okay so please remember mammillary bodies are usually seen in basal ganglia so please remember in basal ganglia there would be atrophy of these mammillary bodies which can be seen in wernicke's korsakoff syndrome yaad rakhna important hai right now let's discuss guys about important features that can be seen on alcohol withdrawal theek hai so what happens if there is a chronic alcohol or uh, chronic alcoholic and he suddenly stops taking alcohol then he will experiences some important symptoms okay he experiences some important symptoms so let's see so after 6 to 8 hours of alcohol withdrawal what can be seen there would be now uh, symptoms like nausea vomiting anxiety hypertension dilatation of pupils that is midriasis and the, but the most common word would be withdrawal tremors okay most common one are coast tremors would be seen so please remember alcohol withdrawal ke 6 to 8 hours baad we the patient starts experiencing some somatic symptoms and the most common somatic symptoms in cases of alcohol withdrawal are coast tremors kya hota hai the patient starts experiencing coast tremors okay after 6 to 8 hours of last alcohol intake then after 24 to 48 hours of last alcohol intake what happens so please remember after 24 to 48 hours of last alcohol intake the patient experiences withdrawal seizures okay the patient experiences usually generalized tonic clonic seizures which are cluster seizures which occur in clusters okay so these are known as withdrawal seizures and lastly after 48 to 72 hours of alcohol withdrawal the patient experiences delirium tremens okay after 48 to 72 hours of the last alcohol intake the patient experiences delirium tremens and delirium what do we mean by delirium delirium means disturbance in consciousness along with disorientation the person is disoriented to time place and person okay uh, there is disturbance of in conscious uh, consciousness or there we can say clouding of consciousness is seen right there would be some visual disturbances also and the person would also experience some visual hallucinations okay so all of these features are seen in cases of delirium tremens which usually occurs 48 to 72 hours after the last alcohol intake and this was a question which came that a person started experiencing all these symptoms after 48 hours of alcohol intake most of them have marked it as alcohol withdrawal seizures please remember guys it these are not alcohol withdrawal seizures it is delirium tremens yaad rakhna and what is the drug of choice for all these so please remember the drug of choice for all of these is benzodiazepines either the patient presents to you with alcohol withdrawal tremors seizures or delirium tremens the drug of choice will still remain benzodiazepines okay benzodiazepines like diazepam 
medazolam okay all all of these drugs can be usually given okay please remember this along with that there are some deterrent agent or aversive agent if you want the patient to avoid alcohol what can be given you can give these drug mixed with some other food and then when the person takes alcohol after taking this drug what happens the patient would start experiencing very uh, severe somatic symptoms there would be excessive vomiting there would be excessive headache all of these symptoms the patient would experience and the patient would get a fear that acha maine daru pini ki wajah se ye hua hai okay so this excessive fear is created after taking these drugs so therefore these are known as deterrent agents or aversive agent and the most common deterrent or aversive agent is known as disulfiram the most common deterrent or aversive agent is known as dye selfie ram important one yaad rakhna ye okay now let's move further to our next one okay and these uh, this was about your deterrent or aversive agents to avoid or to scare the patient about alcohol intake okay that was dye selfie ram there are also some drugs which avoid craving of alcohol and these are known as anti craving agents and these anti craving agents are drugs like naltrexone okay yaad rakhna a camprosate a camprosate topiramate okay and topiramate these are the three important drugs that you need to remember at least okay now moving further to our opioids which are again a very important part of substance abuse now let's talk about opioids which is the most common abused opioid so please remember the most common abused opioid is heroin most common abused opioid is heroin most common abused opioid is heroin okay in case a person experiences opioid toxicity then the drug of choice would be what so please remember bolte na lohe ko loho kaat lohe ko loha kaatta hai waisi opioid ko opioid kaatta hai so in cases of opioid toxicity we give usually a shorter acting opioid as a antidote also so in cases of opioid toxicity the drug of choice would be iv naloxone the drug of choice for opioid toxicity would be iv naloxone whereas for maintenance therapy of opioid toxicity once the patient presented to you in emergency okay and then you immediately gave iv naloxone now the patient has to be kept on maintenance therapy in this condition the drug of choice would be naltrexone maintenance is for a longer duration of time so therefore a longer name of a drug naloxone acute case mein so naloxone shorter name shorter drug shorter acting drug longer acting drug like naltrexone is given for maintenance therapies okay please remember this next one is your cannabis okay very important i have already asked you about the active principle of cannabis so please remember what is the active principle of cannabis cannabis ka active principle hota hai d9 tetrahydrocannabinol or d9 thc okay so please remember question from fmd also the active principle of cannabis is d9 tetrahydrocannabinol okay important one d9 tetrahydro cannabidol and it is derived from which plant guys so please remember cannabis is derived from cannabis sativa which is the plant from which it is derived it is derived from cannabis sativa and opium is derived from which plant so please remember opium is usually derived from papaver somniferum it is derived from papaver somniferum yaad rakhna okay important hai next one guys talking about cannabis intoxication if a person is intoxicated with cannabis okay what can happen the person would experience flashback phenomena okay so please remember wow, like the last time he actually uh, was intoxicated with cannabis usko wo sab cheeze yaad aane lagenge this is known as flashback phenomena so the person experiences flashback phenomena in which substance abuse in cannabis abuse patient experiences flashback phenomena in which substance abuse in cannabis abuse okay the patient also experiences a motivational syndrome okay there would be loss of motivation for both personal as well as professional domain usko kuch karne ka man nahi karega okay please remember that is known as a motivational syndrome again associated with cannabis intoxication and last one important one is your running amok okay run amok bolte usually okay so run amok ya running amok also known as stabbing spree so what do we mean by running amok or stabbing spree so there is an extreme rage that may develop after cannabis intoxication in which what happens a person would injure someone indiscriminately okay kuch nahi sochega chaku leke sabke piche daudne lagega that is what is running amok or stabbing spree there is a intense desire or urge to kill somebody that is what is known as running amok or stabbing spree 
and the last uh, which is seen is usually known as hemp insanity okay last one is known as hemp insanity also again seen with cases of cannabis intoxication okay as we all know cannabis is available in different forms right cannabis is available in different forms that you need to remember guys the dried leaves of cannabis is used for preparing what it is used for preparing bhang okay important one okay it is used for preparing bhang yaad rakh lena next one the infl the inflorescence which is there the dried flowers they would be used for preparing what they are used for preparing ganja the resinous exudates which are there these resinous exudates they would be used to prepare hashish or charas okay they would be used to prepare hashish or charas and last we can also prepare hash oil from this we can also prepare hash oil from this okay so please remember these are the most important ones so now talking about the next one that is cocaine intoxication talking about cocaine intoxication cocaine ka root of administration kya hota hai usually cocaine is administered via snorting cocaine it is administered via snorting please remember usually with a dollar or with a roll of a paper usually the person uh, snorts cocaine right so snorting is done in cases of cocaine along with that if a person is intoxicated if a person is uh, taking cocaine for a longer period of time the person would have black pigmentation of tongue okay this is known as jet black pigmentation of tongue would be seen jet black pigmentation of tongue is usually seen Uh, but which is the most common feature so please remember the most common feature of cocaine intoxication is tactile hallucination most common feature of cocaine intoxication is tactile hallucinations okay which we have already seen that the patient experiences that some bugs are crawling all over his body okay and these is also known as cocaine bugs formification or magnans symptoms right important one next talking about your just a minute guys talking about your mental health care act now important one mental health care act 2017 it was a recent amendment which was done okay so mental health care act 2017 has given an advanced directive okay mental health care act 2017 has given a advanced directive and what do we mean by advanced directive advanced directive actually enables a patient to um, enables an individual actually to um, choose his treatment options right so if pers- some person is saying that i do not want to get shocked at any point of time you would not perform any shock treatment on me so this is the advanced directive which would be uh, referred to in the in the case of if the person is not able to take any decisions for his health care right so this advanced directive would be uh, like this advanced directive would be followed in that case okay the patient's will is at most important the next one Uh, according to this mental health care act 2017 there was a ban which was imposed on direct ect okay uh, ect cannot be directly given electroconvulsive therapy should be given after giving a sedative agent like benzodiazepine we have seen usually in catatonic schizophrenia we give iv lorazepam and then we perform ect right so please remember direct ect pe ban aaya tha next ect for minors should not be performed there was a ban on minors uh, there was a ban on ect for minors also then psycho surgery a uh, surgery cannot be performed for cases of psychiatric disorders there was also ban on this then there was decriminalization of suicide attempt okay so please remember suicide attempt was a crime earlier but it was decriminalized according to this mental health care act 2017 right important one these are the most important features that you need to remember about mental health care act 2017 which were added next one is your delirium guys so what do we mean by delirium okay delirium and dementia are the two important things in which you tend to get confused but these are very easy guys just remember these so now sabse pehle so delirium is what please remember delirium is disturbance of consciousness and disorientation so delirium ke do features important kaun se hai sabse pehle there is disturbance of consciousness also known as clouding of consciousness the person is not properly conscious okay ek feature second is what the person is disoriented the person is not oriented to time place and person he is not aware where he is okay kaha ho kya kaha ho tumhara naam kya hai kaun ho kaun hai tumhare samne nothing he is aware of okay so this is what is known as disoriented person okay usually wo film mein dikha de na main kaha hu main kaun hu types that is what is disorientation right so that is uh, usually seen in cases of delirium delirium is most commonly seen in cases of organic and mental disorder so please remember organic mental disorders mein usually delirium is more commonly seen yaad rakh lena 
okay there is also sundowning phenomena which is seen in delirium okay so what do we mean by sundowning phenomena that is fluctuating course hota hai okay so that consciousness keeps on fluctuating aata jata rehta that is known as sundowning okay important one so this is about your delirium that you need to remember next one is your dementia guys so dementia mein kya hota hai so please remember the most important feature that you need to remember about dementia it is that there is no disturbance of consciousness okay so the consciousness is totally fine the patient is totally completely conscious there is no disturbance of consciousness seen in cases of dementia okay only and only there would be cognitive impairment there would be cognitive impairment what are the cognitive impairment which can be seen there would be amnesia that is there would be memory loss right there would be aphasia the patient would not be able to speak that is aphasia there would be apraxia the patient would not be able to perform motor acts that is apraxia agnosia the patient is not able to recognize or identify faces right so all of these cognitive impairment features would be seen in cases of dementia then which is the most common cause of dementia so please remember the most common cause of dementia is cortical dementia most common cause of dementia is cortical dementia and cortical dementia mein sabse common cause kya hai so please remember the most common cause of cortical dementia would be alzheimer's disease most common cause of cortical dementia would be alzheimer's disease most common cause of cortical dementia would be alzheimer's disease yaad rakh lena okay alzheimer's disease is usually seen along with senility old age ke sath aata alzheimer's disease right it is due to mutation in the apoe4 gene alzheimer's disease kyu hota hai because a mutation is there in the apoe4 gene okay please remember so most common cause of cortical dementia is alzheimer's disease and second most common cause would be vascular dementia okay so most common cause of cortical dementia would be alzheimer's disease followed by vascular dementia vascular dementia there would be some ischemia to some part of the brain which can lead to this neurological deficit usually right so this usually brain is divided usually uh, excuse me for the image please so this brain is divided into the cortex right and the subcortical areas <coughs> so please remember guys कॉर्टिकल डिमेंशिया की मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज क्या है अल्जाइमर्स डिसीज फॉलोड बाय वैस्कुलर डिमेंशिया वेर एज देर कुड बी अ सब कॉर्टिकल डिमेंशिया ऑल्सो सीन वेन देर आर पैथोलॉजीज और देर आर सम डिसऑर्डर्स रिलेटेड टू दिस पार्ट ऑफ द ब्रेन दैट इज सब कॉर्टिकल पार्ट सो सब कॉर्टिकल डिमेंशिया की मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज इज पार्किसन डिसीज मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज फॉर सब कॉर्टिकल डिमेंशिया वुड बी पार्किसन डिसीज फॉलोड बाय हंटिंगटन्स डिसीज और हंटिंगटन्स कोरिया एंड लास्टली देर इज विल्सन डिसीज राइट इंपॉर्टेंट वन सो अल्जाइमर डिसीज में क्या क्या इंपॉर्टेंट दिखता है फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर इज म्यूटेशन इन विद जीन देर इज म्यूटेशन इन द अपो ई फोर जीन विद जीन म्यूटेशन इन द अपो ई फोर जीन विच आर द मोस्ट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर सो प्लीज रिमेंबर द मोस्ट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर आर योर न्यूरो फिब्रिलरी टैंगल्स प्लीज रिमेंबर द मोस्ट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स आर योर न्यूरो फिब्रिलरी टैंगल्स याद रखना देर वुड बी एक्यूमुलेशन ऑफ विच टू प्रोटीन्स there would be accumulation of the amyloid protein and the tau protein accumulation of amyloid protein and the tau protein would be seen along with neurofibrillary tangles there would be neural plaques which can be seen amyloid plaques neural amyloid plaques are usually seen and this tau protein is usually seen in this neurofibrillary tangles yaad rakh lena okay important features next one vascular dementia i have already told you it is due to some uh, ischemia to some part of the brain सब कॉर्टिकल डिमेंशिया में पार्किसन डिसीज एज यू ऑल नो पार्किसन डिसीज इज ड्यू टू टू विच न्यूरो ट्रांसमिटेड डेफिशियंसी इट इज ड्यू टू डेफिशियंसी ऑफ डोपामीन डोपामीन इज यूजली सिक्रेटेड बाय सब्सटेंशिया नाइग्रा विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ बेजल गैंग्रिया सो सब्सटेंशिया नाइग्रा नाइग्रा का मतलब होता है ब्लैक सो प्लीज रिमेंबर एज डोपामीन इज सिक्रेटेड फ्रॉम सब्सटेंशिया नाइग्रा इट इम्पार्ट सब्सटेंशिया नाइग्रा ब्लैक कलर बट इफ डोपामीन वुड बी डिक्रीज ओके सो डोपामीन सिक्रेशन इफ डिक्रीज देन सब्सटेंशिया नाइग्रा would be pale in color okay so there would be pallor of substantia nigra in parkinsonism patients there would be pallor of substantia nigra in pallor parkinsonism patient and parkinson's disease is usually characterized by which three important features the triad would be first of all characteristic resting tremors and these characteristic resting tremors are known as what these are known as pin rolling tremors kuch aise tar is tarah se dikhega patient hamesha there would be pin rolling resting tremors can be seen second there would be bradykinesia there would be slowness of movements बहुत धीरे धीरे काम करेगा ओके दैट इज व्हाट इज नोन एज ब्रैडी काइनीजिया लास्टली देर वुड बी रिजिडिटी मसल रिजिडिटी सीन ओके मसल रिजिडिटी इन द अपर रिम्स इज नोन एज कॉगविल रिजिडिटी ओके एंड मसल रिजिडिटी इन द लोअर लिम्स इज नोन एज लेड पाइप रिजिडिटी 
ओके इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर्स इसके अलावा माइक्रोग्राफिया दिखेगी वेरी स्मॉल हैंड राइटिंग वुड बी सीन ओके म्यूटी अकाइनेटिक म्यूटिज्म द पेशेंट वुड स्पीक वेरी स्लोली और ही वुड नॉट स्पीक एट ऑल सो ऑल ऑफ दीज फीचर्स आर सीन यूजली इन केसेस ऑफ पार्किसन डिसीज देन हंटिंगटन्स डिसीज इज यूजली सीन हंटिंगटन कोरिया अब नॉर्मल मूवमेंट्स आर सीन राइट इन वॉलेंट्री मूवमेंट्स दीज आर यू ड्यू टू ट्राई न्यूक्लियोटाइड कैग रिपीट्स विच वे हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन पैथोलॉजी एंड विल्सन डिसीज इज ड्यू टू एक्सेसिव एक्यूमलेशन ऑफ कॉपर एंड इफ दिस एक्सेसिव कॉपर एक्यूमलेट्स और डिपॉजिट्स इन द बेजल गैंग्रिया इट कैन लीड टू डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द लेंटिकल ऑफ द बेजल गैंग्रिया लीडिंग टू ऑल दीज पाकिस्तानिज्म लाइक फीचर्स विच इज अ कॉज ऑफ सबकॉटिकल डिमेंशन ऑल्सो मूविंग फर्दर गाइज टू आर नेक्स्ट वन दैट इज योर पर्सनैलिटी टाइप्स ओके देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ पर्सनैलिटीज विच आर यू कॉमनली सीन सो प्लीज रिमेंबर द इम्पॉर्टेंट थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ पर्सनैलिटी विच आर सीन गाइज फर्स्ट इज योर टाइप ए पर्सनैलिटी इन द टाइप ए पर्सनैलिटी इंडिविजुअल इज यूजली वेरी कॉम्पिटेटिव ठीक है हर एक से कॉम्पिटिशन होल्ड लगाता रहता है देन देर इज टाइम अर्जेंसी टाइम का बहुत पक्का होता है बहुत पंक्चुअल होता है If he is coming for 15 minute break, he'll only come for 15 minute break, not even a single minute more. Okay, he is very angry all the time. Okay, बहुत गुस्से में रहता है angry young man types and he is hostile also. Okay, so he does not like other people. Okay, बहुत यही होता रहता है. So he always competes with other people. Right? Please remember this. Next one is type B personality. Type B personality is usually what? These are usually easy going and relaxed individuals. Type B personality individuals are easy going and रिलैक्स उनको किसी दुनिया से फर्क नहीं पड़ता है ओके भाड़ में जाओ तुम सब लोग टाइप्स ओके सो दैट इज योर टाइप बी पर्सनैलिटी एंड वॉट इज टाइप डी पर्सनैलिटी दैन सो प्लीज रिमेंबर टाइप डी पर्सनैलिटी इज नेगेटिव अफेक्टिविटी एंड सोशल इनिबेशन सो दीज पीपल आर वेरी पेसिमिस्टिक ओके हर एक बात के बारे में नेगेटिव सोचेंगे राइट एंड दे आर सोशली इनिबिटेड दे आर सोशली आइसोलेटेड दे डू नॉट लाइक इन टू गोइंग गोइंग इन टू सोशल अकेजन्स ओके दे डू नॉट लाइक मिक्सिंग विद पीपल सो दो आर टाइप डी पर्सनैलिटी इंडिविजुअल्स Now talking about some few personality disorders which are really important. So first is your obsessive compulsive personality disorder. So obsessive per- compulsive personality disorder is also known as anencastic personality disorder. This alternative name was asked previously in the examination, guys. Obsessive compulsive personality disorder is also known as anencastic personality disorder. Please remember, guys, OCD is different and OCPD is different. right so ocpd is also known as anencastic personality disorder in which the person is having again the same repetitive thoughts along with compulsions but it is a personality disorder right next one is your borderline personality disorder in which there is emotional instability of the person the person sometimes gets really very angry the, sometimes he is very happy okay bahut stable nahi hota emotionally so this is what is a borderline personality disorder the patient can lead to uh, the patient can take decisions of suicide also in borderline personality next one is your narcissistic personality disorder those people who feel really great about themselves okay who have very high self esteem they have delusion of grandeur or they have grandiose about grandiose ideas about themselves ki main bahut mahan atma hu main koi bhagwan ka avatar hu okay all these types of ideas are seen usually in this narcissistic personality disorder individuals and last is your histrionic personality disorder histrionic are all your dramatic and uh, dramatic personality disorder seen usually in ekta kapoor serials all those types nahi 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 types okay all those types next one is your child psychiatric ke bare mein important features that you need to remember guys first is your adhd okay first is your adhd that is attention deficit hyperkinetic disorder attention deficit hyperkinetic or you can also say hyperactivity disorder ओके अटेंशन डेफिसिट मतलब इस बच्चे का अटेंशन कम है द चाइल्ड इज इजीली डिस्ट्रैक्टेबल हाइपर काइनेटिक और हाइपर एक्टिव द चाइल्ड इज हाइपर एक्टिव हिट गोज हियर एंड देर रूम्स ऑल अराउंड द क्लास डिस्टर्ब डिस्टर्ब अदर स्टूडेंट्स इन द क्लास राइट सो इट इज कॉमनली सीन इन बॉयज ऑब्वियसली राइट इट इज कॉमनली सीन इन बॉयज द बॉयज आर इन अटेंटिव ओके दे आर हाइपर एक्टिव रोमिंग ऑल अराउंड द क्लास ओके दे देर इज इम्पल्सिविटी कुछ भी दिमाग में आया कुछ भी कर दिया ठीक है uh, किसी को चौक फेंक ने मार चौक फेंक के मारने का मन कर रहा है चौक फेंक के मार दिया इन बिटवीन अ क्लास ओके सो देर इज अ सडन और व्हाट वी कैन से अ सडन एंड स्ट्रॉन्ग डिजायर टू डू समथिंग सो दैट इज व्हाट इज इम्पल्सिविटी एंड द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस हैव बीन आस्ट प्रीवियसली आल्सो फ्रॉम पीडियाट्रिक्स सो प्लीज रिमेंबर द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर ए इज वॉट मिथाइल फेनिडेट द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर ए इज मिथाइल फेनिडेट ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर ए इज मिथाइल फेनिडेट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नेक्स्ट वन इज योर ऑटिज्म सो वॉट डू यू define uh, as autism please remember guys autism means impaired social interaction okay autism usually means impaired social interaction dusron se baat kam karta hai khud mein hi rehta hai okay 
they are isolated socially there is impaired social interaction they could not uh, normally converse with the uh, like the community or the normal individuals okay so social interaction is really less or it is impaired there would be restrictive repetitive behaviors ek hi cheez bar bar karte rahenge for example somebody has a habit of curling hair to curl hair curly karta rahega so that is restrictive and repetitive behaviors are usually seen along with that there were some language and communication dysfunction but now it has been removed from the diagnosis that language and communication dysfunction is not necessary for diagnosis of autism sometimes autism can also be present without any language and communication dysfunction right important one next is your red syndrome so please remember guys red syndrome is similar to autism uh, but it is only seen in females because it has the x link dominant pattern of inheritance okay red syndrome is only seen in females because it has x link dominant pattern of inheritance okay in this we can see microcephaly usually at both the head circumference is totally normal at both the head circumference is totally normal but as the child grows as the girl grows uh, in age what happens the head circumferential growth decreases okay the rate of head circumference growth decreases decelerated head circumferential growth is seen that leads to microcephaly next there would be autistic symptoms there would be ataxia and there would be seizures in this child okay red syndrome next is your intellectual disability as we all know guys intellectual disability is what intellectual disability is a newer name for mental retardation intellectual disability is nothing but a newer name for mental retardation the most common cause for intellectual disability is what so please remember most common cause for intellectual disability is chromosomal abnormalities most common cause for intellectual disability is chromosomal abnormalities and which is the most common chromosomal abnormality leading to intellectual disability it is your fragile x syndrome most common one is your fragile x syndrome followed by trisomy 21 known as down syndrome followed by trisomy 21 known as down syndrome yaad rakhna next is your tourette syndrome what do we mean by tourette syndrome hk movie dekhi hogi sabne right so please remember by tourette syndrome in this the patient usually experiences multiple motor and vocal tics okay so the patient would have like this okay uh, suddenly there would be some uh, involuntary movements which can be seen okay these are involuntary movements due to uh, a sudden spasm of a group of muscles okay so that can either lead to some multiple motor tics or vocal tics okay there would be some abnormal voice which can be seen okay uh, so multiple motor and vocal tics if are seen in a patient that patient is diagnosed as tourette syndrome okay rani mukherjee's hishki was a movie in which tourette syndrome uh, she was suffering from tourette syndrome right then what is the first line treatment for tourette syndrome please remember it is your habit reversal therapy to tourette syndrome ka first line treatment kya hai habit reversal therapy usually okay please remember this then repetition of speech is known as echolalia and repetition of motor movements is known as echo praxia repetition of speech is known as echo really and repetition of motor movements is known as echo praxia important one next one about some important points and then we'll end the session so talking about the most important gentleman in psychiatry that is sigmund freud okay the, he is the most important one that is sigmund freud usually a cool gentleman with having a cigar in his hand right so that is what that is who, who is sigmund freud okay the image uh, the picture of him can be asked i'll show you the picture also so please remember So who was Sigmund Freud? Sigmund Freud is considered the father of psychoanalysis. Sigmund Freud is considered the father of psychoanalysis. Sigmund Freud is considered the father of psychoanalysis. He also stated the topographical theory of mind. He also stated the topographical theory of mind important one okay and also gave the structural theory of mind okay topographical and structural theory of mind. सेगमेंट फ्रेंड ने कौन सी दो थियरीज दी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टोपोग्राफिकल थियरी एंड सेकेंड इज द स्ट्रक्चरल थियरी ऑफ माइंड अकॉर्डिंग टू द स्ट्रक्चरल थियरी ऑफ माइंड विच ही गेव ओके ही डिवाइडेड माइंड इंटू थ्री टाइप्स दैट इज एड ईगो एंड सुपर ईगो एड ईगो एंड सुपर ईगो ओके सो वॉट इज द एड माइंड दैट इज यू ओनली नीड टू ओके यूजली वी हैव दीज थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ माइंड राइट सो फर्स्ट इज आर एड वॉट इज एड दैट इज यू नीड टू जस्ट एंजॉय प्लेजर बस दिन भर मजे करते रहो कोई पढ़ाई मत करो बस घूमो फिरो मौज करो ऐश करो ओके दैट इज योर एड विच इज स्पीकिंग टू यू नेक्स्ट इज योर ईगो व्हाट इज ईगो ईगो शोज यू द रियलिटी ओके ठीक है प्रैक्टिकलिटी है कि यार एग्जाम है अभी दो तीन महीनों में यू नीड टू रीड यू नीड टू रीड यू नीड टू वर्क हार्ड यू नीड टू सॉल्व ऑल योर एम दिस इज वॉट इज अ प्रैक्टिकल बिहेवियर विच इज सीन यूजली इन केसेस ऑफ ईगो ईगो शोज यू द रियलिटी एंड वॉट इज सुपर ईगो सुपर ईगो मीन्स 
uh, a very high moral moralistic behavior so in this the patient exam ya do mahine baad exam ya i need to read 20 hours a day 22 hours a day so that is more than like beyond the limits of a normal individual so that is what is usually a super ego right important one now there are some important defense mechanisms which are usually seen okay and these important defense mechanisms kya kya hote hai first of all it is the ab reaction on which question have been asked okay i am telling those ones ab reaction ab reaction is what it is the recall of memory with release of emotions so whenever you recall a memory whenever you recall someone who is dead who is no more and then there would be a sudden release of emotion you would cry aloud so that is what is known as ab reaction recall of memory leading to release of emotions is known as ab reaction this um, uh, this definition was asked previously next is known as sublimation sublimation is was transform socially unaccept unacceptable impulse into an acceptable one right so what happens kabhi kabhi kya hota hai kisi kisi ka khoon karne ka man karta hai right kabhi kabhi so that is a socially unacceptable impulse that uh, is uh, present in your mind so you need to transform it into an acceptable one you just taunt him sarcastically you need to taunt that person so this is a acceptable uh, response that you have created so this transformation is known as sublimation okay this is a mature defense mechanism this is a mature defense mechanism next is your regression okay regression mein kya hota hai the person returns to an earlier stage of development okay so the person went from adolescent to childhood so this is what is regression right now talking about some important psychosexual stages of development some important psychosexual stages of development okay on this question have been asked guys twice or thrice almost so please remember the first psychosexual stage of development is known as the oral stage first stage is known as the oral stage when the person is sucking his thumb only okay so first is known as the oral stage second is known as the anal stage and if there is some defect in the anal stage then the person develops obsessive compulsive disorder or ocd so please remember ocd is a disorder of anal stage so please remember ocd is a disorder of anal stage okay so please remember guys ocd uh, is a disorder of anal stage anal stage usually lasts around 2 to 3 years ke aas pass hota hai okay anal stage next is your phallic stage next is your phallic stage phallic stage lasts for 3 to 5 years okay so 3 to 5 years of age that is your phallic stage okay and if a person is having some disorder in the phallic stage that can per that person can land up into two complex either a edifice complex or a electra complex okay so what is the edifice complex okay what is the edifice edifice complex feelings for feelings a sexual what do we can say sexual and attractive feelings it between a son and mother is known as a edifice complex and between a daughter and father is known as a electra complex okay so please remember there is a constant thought in usually a child's mind at this point of stage that the mother is only mine okay and a constant thought in daughter's mind that the father is only mine so this is usually a thought which develops around 3 to 5 years of age in the phallic stage itself and this is known as edifice complex for son and mother electra complex for daughter and father next one is your latent stage okay latent stage and last is your genital stage genital stage is from 12 years till adulthood itself when the genital uh, ge uh, all your genital start developing next one talking about your mmsc mmsc is what mmsc is your mini mental status examination mmsc is your mini mental status examination which is usually performed for clinical examination for psychiatric patient of uh, for which mmsc ka maximum score is 30 mmsc ka maximum score is 30 and less than 24 score is suggestive of dementia less than 24 score is suggestive of dementia please remember this next one guys now talking we have spoken about intellectual disability but intellectual disability grade kari ja sakti mental retardation can be graded it is depending on the intellect intelligent quotient right it is depending on your intelligent question okay intelligent question can be calculated as what it is calculated as the developmental age upon the chronological age into 100 right aise calculate karte right so chronological age please remember it is a normal age in way uh, uh, and it can be only till 15 maximum chronological age can only be till 15 yaad rakh lena right important one so iq hota hai intelligent question so normal iq is how much 92109 normal iq is 92109 borderline iq is 7289 borderline iq is 7289 mild intellectual disability would be 
69 mild intellectual disability is 52 69 moderate intellectual disability is 35 to 49 moderate intellectual disability is 35 to 49 severe intellectual disability is 20 to 34 and profound intellectual disability is less than 20 so easy 90 to 109 your normal iq hai ye yaad rehta hai right so then decrease 20 from it 70 to 89 or 70 to 90 yaad rakh lo for convenience 70 to 90 is what borderline iq right then decrease again 20 from it 50 to 70 yaad rakh lo that is mild intellectual disability then now start decreasing 15 15 पहले दो बार 20 डिक्रीज किए अब तीन बार 15 डिक्रीज करो सो स्टार्ट डिक्रीजिंग 15 दैट इज 35 टू 50 दैट इज मॉडरेट इंटेलेक्चुअल डिसेबिलिटी स्टार्ट डिक्रीजिंग 15 अगेन 20 टू 34 दैट इज सीवियर इंटेलेक्चुअल डिसेबिलिटी एंड लेस देन 20 इज प्रोफाउंड इंटेलेक्चुअल डिसेबिलिटी राइट गाइस नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू आवर क्वेश्चंस गाइस एंड देन वी विल कॉल ऑफ द सेशन फॉर टुडे सो वील डिस्कस दीस इंपॉर्टेंट एमसीक्यूज दैट वी हैव फॉर यू ओवर हियर Okay, so the first question says a 25 year old male, uh, a 25 year old male patient complains of his neighbors conspiring against him. He hears voices commenting on his actions, right? He was started on antipsychotics for his condition. The most common adverse effect seen as, okay? So please remember guys, this uh, is usually a case of what? So please remember, let's put a provisional diagnosis at first. Okay, <coughs> very easy. A young adult male, right? A young adult male suffering from what? Neighbors conspiring against him. He feels that neighbors are conspiring against him. This is what? Delusion of persecution. And delusion of persecution is commonly seen in which disorder? Delusion of persecution. When the person feels that the neighbors are conspiring or uh, they are going to harm or kill him. This is delusion of persecution, commonly seen in cases of schizophrenia, right? Along with that, he also hears some voices commenting on his actions, right? That is, that is running commentary, which is a type of auditory hallucination seen in schizophrenia, right? So this is a case of schizophrenia, for which the patient was started on antipsychotics, right? So for this condition, for his condition, the most common adverse effect. Now, which is the most common adverse effect? Let's see the options first. Okay, option A, acute dystonia, option B, tardive dyskinesia, option C, acute akathesia, option D, neuroleptic malignant syndrome. This we have already discussed guys. Okay, these are all side effects known as what? These are all side effects known as extra pyramidal side effects. And these extra pyramidal side effects are associated with which type of antipsychotics, typical or atypical? Yes, these are associated usually with typical antipsychotics. Okay, right, important one. So now they have asked which is the most common extra parameter side effect associated with typical antipsychotic. This is the clear cut question. So now which is the most common one? Yes, the option over here is or answer over here is option C, acute akathesia that we have discussed already, right? Restless leg syndrome. Patient keeps on moving from here and there. He cannot sit quite at one place. So that is known as acute akathesia. And the drug of choice we have already discussed for acute akathesia is what? A non-selective beta buffer known as propanolol, which is also a drug of choice for essential tremors. Yaad rakhna. If they ask that the earliest adverse side effect seen, then the answer would have been acute dystonia. Acute dystonia. When a sudden muscle group, when a specific muscle group undergoes sudden spasm, right? Acute dystonia for which drugs like promethazine can be used, right? Tardive dyskinesia is a long-term abnormal movement which can be seen, okay? And neuroleptic malignant syndrome, it has a triad of fever, right? It has a triad of fever, muscle rigidity and elevated CPK levels. Elevated CPK levels are seen. And the drug of choice for neuroleptic malignant syndrome is usually what? Dantrolene. Yaad rakh lena. So, important one. Moving further to question number two. A patient presented to psychiatric OPD with complaints of sad mood with episodes of irritability, insomnia and over talkativeness. The preferred treatment is, so now what is the preferred treatment? Let's see. Option A, haloperidol plus olanzapine. Option B, lithium. Option C, haloperidol. Option D, olanzapine plus lithium. So first of all, एक तो पहले ट्रीटमेंट स्टार्ट्स करने से पहले हमें प्रोविजनल डायग्नोसिस पता होना चाहिए। तो व्हाट इस डी प्रोविजनल डायग्नोसिस इन दिस कंडीशन? अ पेशेंट इस कंप्लेनिंग ऑफ सैड मूड, ओके? सो देर इस डी सैड मूड, डिप्रेस्ड मूड, ओके? एक बात है। सेकंड, देर वार एपिसोड्स ऑफ इरिटेबिलिटी, इनसोमनिया एंड ओवर टॉकेटिवनेस। 
सो एपिसोड्स ऑफ इरिटेबिलिटी और एलिवेटेड मूड इन सो मनी और डिक्रीज नीड फॉर स्लीप एंड ओवर टॉकेटिवनेस दीज आर यूजली सिम्टम्स सीन इन विच डिसऑर्डर येस दीज आर सिम्टम्स सीन इन केस ऑफ मेनिया बट वट वी कैन सी ओवर यर प्लीज रिमेंबर द पर्सन इज एक्सपीरियंसिंग सैड मूड बट देर आर इन बिटवीन एपिसोड्स ऑफ मेनिया सो बोथ ऑफ दीज डिसऑर्डर्स आर सीन डिप्रेशन अलॉन्ग विथ मेनिया and depression along with mania is known as what bipolar disorder type 1 okay so bipolar disorder hai. so what is the provisional diagnosis bpd so now the preferred treatment in this case have they asked about a, a, a acute or maintenance no they haven't asked about anything so in this case better prefer acute cases okay so please remember they have been asking about acute cases usually right so the preferred treatment in this case is what so first of all option a says haloperidol plus olanzapine okay haloperidol is a typical antipsychotic olanzapine is a atypical antipsychotic both antipsychotics no this is not right right second is lithium i have already explained to you guys lithium alone is not the drug of choice lithium alone is not the drug of choice in cases of uh, acute episodes right please remember it is a drug of choice in cases of maintenance therapy okay it is a mood stabilizer lithium or valproate can be used as mood stabilizers or carbamazepine also so for maintenance therapy lithium valproate or carbamazepine can be used lithium is a drug of choice for maintenance therapy of bpd not for acute cases okay haloperidol again a typical antipsychotic only no that is that is not a good option option d olanzapine plus lithium yes so option d is the right answer over here where we prefer a typical antipsychotic okay here we prefer a a typical antipsychotic along with a mood stabilizer so this is the best answer that we have if this was not in the option then haloperidol we would have marked okay because only a antipsychotic is a preferred treatment in cases of acute episodes of mania and if they have would have asked for maintenance therapy then the answer would have been lithium next question number 3 which among the following is used in the treatment of borderline personality disorder okay so let's see now option a says modeling option b says cognitive behavioral therapy option c says dialectical behavioral therapy option d says exposure and response prevention as we all know exposure and response prevention is the psychotherapy of choice it is the psychotherapy of choice in cases of obsessive compulsive disorder ocd may usually the psychotherapy of choice is exposure and response prevention right so please remember this modeling is not usually performed in cases of personality borderline personality disorder right please remember this so the treatment of choice now the first line treatment usually used in cases of borderline personality disorder is what please remember guys it is option b that is cognitive behavioral therapy okay important next one question number 4 a 32 year old man comes to the physician with complaining of excessive sleepiness for the past several months he reports falling asleep while dealing with customers had an almost accident when he fell asleep while driving the patient reports that he occasionally hears voices while falling asleep and finds himself temporarily frozen and unable to move on awakening all of the following are the features of this condition except तो सबसे पहले तो एक प्रोविजनल डायग्नोसिस बनाते कि ये कंडीशन है क्या तब तो हम पता लगा पाएंगे कि ऑल ऑफ दीज कंडीशन ऑल ऑफ दीज स्टेटमेंट्स आर ट्रू एक्सेप्ट सो विच इज द फॉल्स स्टेटमेंट ये तब हम पता लगा पाएंगे व्हेन वी एक्चुअली नो द कंडीशन सो लेट्स सी व्हाट इज द कंडीशन यंग अडल्ट मेल अगेन ओके कंप्लेन्स ऑफ एक्सेसिव स्लीपीनेस दैट इज सोमनोलन्स ओके सो सोमनोलन्स का कंप्लेन कर रहा है नेक्स्ट वन ही रिपोर्ट्स फॉलोइंग अस्लीप वाई डीलिंग विद कस्टमर्स while uh, driving right so we have seen like repetitive uh, episodes of falling asleep these are what these are sleep attacks so patient is experiencing sleep attacks right along with that the patient also reports that he occasionally hears voices that uh, and while going to sleep so while going to sleep if the patient is hearing voices without anybody around him so that those are auditory hallucinations and these auditory hallucinations while going to sleep are known as which hallucinations these are known as hypnagogic going to sleep gogic hallucinations right so hypnagogic hallucinations are seen along with that the patient finds himself temporarily frozen and unable to move on awakening so that is a what that is a symptom of paralysis right 
so the patient is experiencing sleep paralysis so all of these features somnolence paralysis sleep attacks hypnagogic hallucinations all of these are characteristic of what yes they are characteristic of sleep disorder known as narco lepsy yes they are disorder they are characteristic of narco lepsy so now they are asking all of the following are the features of this condition except so what can be seen in narcolepsy let's see option a it is a disorder of rem sleep regulation yes it is a disorder of rem sleep regulation right there would be decreased latency of rem sleep seen in cases of narcolepsy right important feature next option b we can see catalepsy do we see catalepsy or cataplexy right we can see cataplexy right cataplexy is seen not catalepsy cataplexy is sudden loss of the tone of the muscles of the body right not catalepsy okay so please remember catalepsy is usually seen in cases of catatonic schizophrenia okay it is a motor symptom catatonic symptom please remember this okay and hypnopompic hallucinations are the hallucinations which the patient experiences while getting up from sleep right so please remember the exception over here is catalepsy which is not seen in narcolepsy usually we prefer uh, usually we see cataplexy important moving further to question number 5 identify the eminent personality in the image who put forth the topographical theory of mind so um, i just forgot to in, in, include the image over here guys so just tell me who actually introduced the topographical theory of mind just tell me topographical theory of mind was given by <coughs> topographical theory of mind and structural theory of mind that id ego and super ego those were given by whom yes the father of psychoanalysis that is sir sigmund freud yes sir sigmund freud gave the topographical and structural theory of mind johann christian rehn termed the coined the term psychiatry john christian real coined the term psychiatry emil kreplin coined the term dementia precox emil emil kreplin coined the term dementia precox which was the earlier term used for schizophrenia so schizophrenia term was coined by whom so please remember schizophrenia term was coined by eugen bleuler it was coined by eugen bleuler yaad rakh lena schizophrenia usne diya tha term and lastly kurt schneider gave the 11 first rank schneiderian symptoms of schizophrenia which were what which were three auditory hallucinations three made symptoms three thought alienation symptoms one somatic passivity and last delusional perception right important one so next question mr sam 50 years old was found in delhi he has a girlfriend stable job and normal circumstances a family in mumbai with a wife and two sons who found mr sam on facebook claims that mr sam to be her husband and father respectively this was further proven by old family photos and dna matching his name was in fact mr peter and was reported lost 5 years ago mr sam declines to know them and co coincidentally his girlfriend and job too are 5 years old what is the likely diagnosis right so let's see guys important one isme kya ho raha hai let's see the important features so this mr sam who is 50 years old okay this mr sam he was found in delhi at a new place with a girlfriend a stable job and he was norm in a normal circumstance but a family was claiming that who was staying in mumbai uh, with wife and two sons they were claiming that sam is their father or husband respectively right so they were saying that uh, the person mr sam was lost 5 years ago right and this was proven that this mr sam is in fact mr peter and he is their husband or he is her husband or their father with old family photos dna matching was also done so ab iska kya hai ki ye mr peter hai actually jo 5 saal pehle kho gaya tha he came from mumbai to delhi to a completely new place right and he attained a new personality okay he forgot about everything else he declines to know them usko yaad nahi hai uski family okay so he is suffering from amnesia right or dementia we can say and then he attained a new personality at a new place he was roaming here and there so all of these coincidentally what is the likely diagnosis so it is a dissociative disorder this we are very sure about so is it dissociative amnesia is it dissociative fugue is it dissociative identity disorder or labile indifference so let's rule out one by one 
first of all dissociative amnesia in dissociative amnesia there would be dissociation like uh, no coordination would be seen along with amnesia would be there only loss of memory but here there is much more to this question right there is also a new place there is a new life there is a new role he has attained right so this is not dissociative amnesia for sure next is dissociative fugue okay so dissociative fugue may actually what happens a person is suffering from amnesia he goes to a new place attains a new personality and takes up a new role and a new job so that is what is option b dissociative fugue this is your answer for this question okay dissociative identity disorder we have already explained that is also known as multiple personality disorder this is usually seen in movies like aparichit when a person has more than two personalities inside a single individual right and labelle indifference is usually seen in cases of conversion disorder right where the patient uh, has like he is like there is lack of concern for his symptoms he is totally unaware usko koi farak nahi padta okay so guys thank you so much with this we end the psych, uh, session of psychiatry also we have completed the revision of psychiatry i hope this will help you out okay in your preparations and let's meet in the next session of sparks till that goodbye good good night